skip the question intro tonight because we don't need no question intro. We love the question. We love Vic Sage. Of course we do. But we're here. We're really late. I apologize. That's that's on me. So glad to see a crowd here right away. So that is freaking awesome. I love seeing it. I love to see it. Yeah, that's going to be good. Uh, we'll probably go two and a half, full three hours tonight uh, because there will be no show next week as I'll be in Houston, Texas doing a festival and I'm going to have a laptop soon. So now when I finally go to like meetups or festivals, I can now actually do stuff on the road and not just leave everything at home the way I always do. But you guys will be missed because I'll be out in the world, you know, with vacation with my girlfriend doing some fun stuff. So we need it. We need a good getaway. She needs it. And we're at fun, but I'm going to miss you guys. And I want to make tonight extra, extra excellent. So thank you guys for being here early and right away. Yeah, we'll talk what we've been reading. I've been luckily I've had a, a week of reading a lot, like a lot of cool stuff, a little bit of new stuff, a little bit of old stuff, and I, I'm I'm antsy to talk about it. And of course, there's been some happenings around the interwebs this week as well. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that too, a little bit of all the above. So let's acknowledge some faces here. Gem Bone, welcome to the show, Gem Bone. How you doing? The Gilded King Vince Bull Mac. Pinochet's helicopter tours. Mr. Conquest Mohammed said. Gwagnar. Nice to see you here, Gwagnar, my man. Just Joe 47. Crixable, the Rainbow Knight. And the mighty Vulcan lives. How are you, sir? And Mrs. Common Nerd's in the chat. Thank you for being here, Mrs. Common Nerd. Nice to see you here as well. Glad everything is going with, okay with you and the family. And glad to have our common nerd back on the show as well. And then we got Christian Dorn with a $2 Canadian Super Test and huge 69 Slayer ref. Yeah. And F yeah to you, Christian. I was lurking listening to your stream with the dudes a few nights ago. So glad to see you are now really on it with the music. I like that. D Bud Martin. Yeah. Muhammad had said transform. Oh, we will talk about that. We will talk about that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, my friend. Trust me. As the critical drink, I like to say, believe that. And yeah, believe that. And <laughs> Christopher Nurkey, if I screw you, Nick, if I can get between you and your loving girlfriend, remember you met me. <laughs> I met you and I met Mel and your daughter. And that was cool. Same. Saying, just saying. All right. I got dudes in the back waiting in the back, and we gotta slide some of them in here. And you know what? We'll start off with the common nerd first because we've missed them. I've missed them. Welcome back, sir. Oh, what's going on, Nick? Sorry, oh, excuse me. My bad, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah, no, just things busy, 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 kind of crazy things going around in the world. And mm -hmm. yeah, trying to get stuff hopefully rounded up and uh, raise enough money by the end of the month that we'll be able to make it to Vegas uh, for the meetup mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, just grinding away and had some fun on the uh, the new YouTube channel, the uh, the Common Nerds one, because I've been dropping some videos over the last few days and like those things have just been absolutely blowing up, hitting all the right topics. Good, right times, I guess. good. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. We're like five away from a 150 subscribers on that one again but those videos are getting like i think i did a i did a video over mr popo because like sweet baby ink can't help but stick <laughs> themselves right in the middle of things of course and, uh, yeah and so it was like i was like i did a video over mr popo and that damn thing got like two thousand over two thousand views already and i'm like all right dig it dig it dig it so yeah go ahead sweet baby ink keep making keep saying dumb things we'll keep we'll keep grifting views off your <laughs> idiot ass go right ahead it's gonna be fun so yeah so yeah it's been a fun that. couple of weeks as far as all that kind of stuff's concerned but other than that yeah just tired so i don't know if i'm gonna stay the whole night or not we'll see what happens but okay uh, hey yeah yeah so i appreciate you be guys. here as long as you can be here there's no questions there's no how dare you come and nerd <laughs> be here for when you are here it is what it is man you're in good company here so we all we know you operate on a lot of channels and a mega sized family so it's not like you don't have a life yeah <laughs> yeah very true so very, let, very, we're, very we're, 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 I, I like to think that we're a reasonable bunch here. So, oh, yeah, but absolutely. glad to have you back though. And let's oh, enjoy sure. your time here while you're here. What's up, FKC 2005 saying, get a haircut, you damn baby. If I start balding, I will straight up shave my head. Full stop. Not even joking, not sarcastic. I will straight up, that will be, that's it. Like, that's, that's done. But other than that, 
I'm good. I'm sure you're joking, but still. But that's in all seriousness. If that did happen, that's how I would straight up handle it. I don't. I'm not gonna do some weird comb over hanging on to dear life. So, anyways, let's bring on our other dudes. Let's bring on the club or himself, Captain Clobby, who was just wearing some daredevil. Yo, what's up, my friends? Cl- oh, I didn't change the name. You that car's amazing. Why? Especially no, I love daredevil. Daredevil fan, like if I guess, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we've got two more shows to go, and that we'll have all of Miller reviewed. Uh, be, in total, it'll be 13. And of course, uh, you and I review the one we're coming up next on, which of course is Daredevil Born Again, the classic. After that, it'll be Man Without Fear by Miller, and then uh, after that, then we start the Fantastic Four in April. But yeah, it's uh, that's gonna be a journey right there. But yeah, great stuff, and good to see you, buddy. Hello, fantastic friends in the chat. And my good buddies on the paddle. No, dude, glad to have you here. And I'm so I'm just I love hearing you talk about Daredevil, and I, I love knowing oh, that God. you're talking about that. And now you're at that point with Born Again into the Man Without Fear, dude. Yeah, we just, dude. It's so I don't know how long it's been long it's been since you've read the his first run like the regular series. It's been we just it's that been last not the long. It's probably, I've been well, about a year and a half, two years. That last one was really weird. His last one in that series, but uh, mm-hmm. interesting, and it's just so fun to go back, especially if you're like me and hadn't gone back to it in a long time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Miller was special in um, that run, and it was pretty, it's an amazing run. Uh, but, uh, yeah, great stuff. Awesome. Glad to have you here, sir. Welcome to the show, Putin's Cat. What's up, dearest? Nice to hey. see you here. Osmora199. How you doing, sir? Hopefully you're having a good Friday night. Cheers to you, all three of you amazing gentlemen. Let's bring on the Iron Caster. How's it going, Caster? Dude, it has been a great week. Like, I'm, you know, slowly building up the channel, kind of doing my thing over there. Good. We got some Good. we got some fantastic comics and Rip is kicking ass with his book. Mhm. I got my Joe Bennett art of book. We'll show it off tonight. We'll show it off tonight. Yeah, but no, he he has been making moves like and we'll definitely touch up on that as well of course i mean it's it's big news so we will definitely touch on it so how could we not right right I, i'm happy for the man i'm really happy for i was listening to him on midnight's edge this morning on the in the morning show and yeah it was he definitely seems like his head is definitely in the right place right now with where he's going and i'm i'm saying like he's got good direction and guidance it seems like what what have we thought of is definitely not confirmed he's definitely been taking a lot of guidance from mr dixon so which should be expected but it's it's cool to know it's practically now confirmed and yeah I, it, it's gonna be a good future it's gonna be a good future but caster i'm glad to have you here i can't wait to talk transformers also i got a new toy to show off it's a gi joe Ooh. i know i know, I know. Can't have it's gonna be one. great it's gonna be no no, and wait, wait till I get that Bumblebee Lego. You know that's gonna be wild as well. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we, I mean, we've already been, just to let everyone in. Like, we've already been kind of talking about ideas for that. Like, what we're what are we gonna do? Because you know, let's bring oh, some yeah. fun and oh, let's yeah. try to make let's try to do something with like everyone out here. Oh, I would love that. I love that. All right. So as we all like to say here, Pablo B. he's here. But um, before I bring in our, our other dude, Osmora199, is it five memberships? Thank you, sir. Osmora, you continue to be the man. And even though this isn't a direct donation, this is a clip worthy of that. <laughs> one of the most overacted moments in all of animation ever ever top five top three maybe top one <laughs> debatable of course but it's up there i think we might yeah. be united in that that's at the very minimum top five overacted i think the only thing that would have made it better is if it was like nicholas cage get back here yeah. shocker 
Get back here, soccer! I'm gonna get you! You can't defeat you me! Come back! Come on! <laughs> Whoa. Come on, soccer! Uh, we're gonna have a face off and we're gonna have caught air! Well, it's funny that you say that, too, because he actually admitted in a recent interview that he's actually in talks to play the live-action version of Noir. Of yeah. Noir, yeah. Ooh. Because he played the voice of Noir in the Across the Spider-Verse one. Mm-hmm. I okay. still haven't seen that, by the way. Me neither. Vulcan Liz, we're going to clarify this for you. This is a clip that was really popular during the very early days of the ch- of the show. Very early days. And, well, I kind of decided to start using it again. But you know what? That's a good idea. Maybe we can make that the clip for gifting memberships. I think you just gave us an idea there. You just, you, you, Vulcan Lives. Remember that, that movie? Uh, um, what's it called? With Robert De Niro and Billy uh, Crystal. Analyze this. Yo, you're very, very good, you. You say bring it back. Consider it done. You're very, very good, you. Your wish is our command. It is officially brought back. And we now have just cause for it. Shocker! Oh, that clip is going to stay with us from now until forever. All right. <laughs> Let's bring on the Comic Relief Crusader who's looking mightily green today. Hi, ha chippity chippity doo. A tea diddy da doo. How's it going, dude? It's going, man. Glad I'm to have you here. I'm in the drunken Irish spirit right now. So there we go. Yeah. I got my pint of gold. Oh, you got me, you know, green bow tie in my hat, and and I got a, uh, I got a, I got a green transformer. So there we go. Yeah, we're all we're all set. So there we go. All set, roll tide. Yeah, let's do yeah. this. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I should go get mine, but um, he kind of turned into space. So ah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, how's it going, dudes? It's going nice. <sighs> oh, it's Speaking. going. It's Speaking going. We gotta make tonight movie. extra good since we won't be here next week. We gotta make it real good tonight. Ah, yeah. So this is a uh, a whole special, special, special. It is. It is special. A double sized. Yeah. Yes. Eighty issue. Eighty it, pages. <laughs> right. Oh, this is oh, yeah. the tonight to consider to, Oh yeah, we're gonna have an annual size special. It's gonna have extra pages, and it's gonna be mighty filled with splash pages and lots of action and character moments. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh God, it's been it's been a really good week. Jeez. Uh, you know, and speaking of rip reverse, I'm working with this guy um in florida that Mm -hmm. uh met up with eric july at megacon like a little over a month ago or something like that and so he made an appointment he's going to be doing his comic pitch and so uh for this story i've just been working (laughs) like a madman to get a few character creations done for the pitch for ripperverse Mm-hmm. for his comic that's coming out which is next week so i gotta get at least one more character creation done and inked and colored on top of that so i have been working like crazy the past week like god like crazy so so i have i have one question and i think sure. this is the most important one i can ask <laughs> is it a robot <sighs> no but it does have aliens but it does have aliens so, oh, yeah. 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 Kung Pao. Yeah. Yeah. That's very fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, dude, <laughs> Paragon of Mediocre, you know, yeah. I wish you the best. We'll see what happens. If not, no, oh, there's always going to be opportunity. Yeah. There's always be something. But right. I still wish you the best. If you definitely have potential for greatness, so there's no concern and there's gonna be no debates here on that. So well, I, 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 I hope everything two... works one way or another out for you, bud. Yeah, totally. Because uh, if it works out well, then obviously I get credit for you know character creations and possibly talking royalties. So Ooh, good old capitals. I like. I that. know, right? Like that. I like huge, that. huge, huge, amazing opportunity. Huge capitalism. So it's fantastic. It's so great. So it. huge. Love capitalism. The <laughs> love the money. Love that green. <laughs> the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's awesome. Considering this guy's in Florida, he can't be all that bad. So, yeah, he, he's got to be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 
You know, I, I, I forget that. I was like, oh, I forgot it's St. Patty's Day on right. Sunday. Like, I, 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 like, I didn't make the connection first thing all the green. I'm like, hold on, what's he doing? Oh, See? yeah, that's what Vulcan Lim's. That's what Vulcan Lim says. Yeah, Comic Relief understood the assignment. See, no, he I'm, did. <laughs> that's I've right. Never been good. I like the holiday. I do. <laughs> I am, I am a genuine like, you know, fan of it. I think it's cool, and it's an excuse, you know, be drunk and shitty in every city. Exactly. But it's just something I it doesn't like it doesn't really like like a crypt like oh it's just coming back you know I gotta get ready for it it's just one of those <laughs> oh crud it crept up on me see I don't try to do it half acidly I use my whole ass your whole ass ooh yes I do ooh so. I well I, I bet a certain uh, <laughs> Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed approve I mean there we go yeah bro hug. <laughs> 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 hey, what's uh, up, Penny? Thanks for dropping in, Penny. Uh, uh, <laughs> long time no see. Uh -huh. So, okay, as a lot of people in our chat know and on the panel, for the last uh, several weeks now, I have been teaming up with Wes from Thinking Critical for his Patreon. We've been doing each week we do one Middle World issue, and we've been doing uh one uh issue of Planetary. And we did kick ass number three, which is really funny, like really funny, because it if it takes a concept if assuming that most of us have either watched the movie or read the comic, but that moment where um Dave Zazuski after he was found naked, you know, you're thinking, Wow, no one thought anything weird about this. Like, well, it play it pays off at school when the girl he has a crush on now talks about all of a sudden now he thought oh maybe it's this whole like my confidence is showing type of thing it turns out she thought he was gay and i laughed so <laughs> hard at that i was like oh that is hilarious okay hold on i gotta prepare for this moment here so there we go <laughs> talk there. about a confidence booster it's like and he was like, you could tell he's walking a little different. Like he had a suit on underneath his clothes, even though he was recovering from the injuries from the previous person. Oh, man. Humor side, that was a great moment. Also, I really enjoyed the dad in the original series, something I didn't really think about at the time. The dad's actually a really good character. He's like, you know, he's since the mom died, he's being he's being basically double duty as one parent. He's not seen another lady since then, and he's there just for Dave's interest. And Dave really hates lying about going out because he knows at heart his dad's a really good guy. He's just a guy who's trying to make ends meet for the betterment of him and his son. And then it gets to that incredible moment where you get the very, very brutal introduction of Hit Girl. And, oh, is it brutal. I was like, wow. And then end of issue so i mm. had a blast reading it and i'm on the matrix issue of planetary and the dc comics homage issue of planetary as well clobby i think you must have a, at least a little bit of a slight memory of those issues where there's the characters who are homage like greed lantern wonder woman very Superman. slight but i did read the comic way back when you're yeah, making me want to go back to it, so you never know. You should, man. You should. Well, it was wonderful back at the time when you buy an issue and think it's really cool, and then you go, wow, I can't wait for the next one, and three years later, the next one comes out. <laughs> and you go, I'm not exaggerating one bit. But no, yeah. no, well, you're not. He deserves not. Ellis and Cassidy deserve all the, the uh, ribbing they get over that. Mm -hmm. But still, it was a really good comic. Now that you can, you know, you got it all right there in that lovely book. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was really good though. But I gotta be honest with you, it's been oh my god, it's gotta be like almost 20 years since I've read that mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm at the because nine was the matrix issue where you it, it that takes place as oh, a, issue number nine. Oh god, yeah, nine and ten years ago from number me. nine was the issue where they it goes, it's a period piece issue. Not, sorry, not peer piece. It's a flashback issue. Yeah, you oh yeah, Ambrose, that. Ambrose Chase. Remember Ambrose Chase, who's with Jaquita yeah. Wagner. And you start to see, oh, I can see why Jaquita is the way she is now, type of thing. 
And it see you see what were her life was like before Elijah Snow got in the picture. And then after that, it, that was the whole Matrix issue where they go to you know find the guy at the tower, yeah. and Ambrose Chase gets killed basically because and he he had a kid. You're like, Where, where's the kid at in all this? It makes you realize why planetary as a group was a lot more um, reactive than they were proactive when the issues are starting on. So it's been an incredible ride reading these issues. I this comic is absolutely like wild and i can't especially after being so fatigued by multiverses this story has well, completely made me a believer it's completely made me a believer he, i can't uh, believe i'm saying it ellis was a big fan of something i don't want to get too te- too like down in the weeds but of something called bald newton which was uh created by the great author philip jose farmer and mm-hmm. this is a he, he, i'm not saying he's ripping it he's done a very good job of 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 taking off from it let's just say Walt mm-hmm. Newton was uh you talk about shared universes mm-hmm. obviously comics had them but in the around the 60s you no know, Philip Jose Farmer started writing some books about postulating theories that of all the literary pulp type characters in the same shared universes and he wrote a book called Tarzan Alive which talked about mm-hmm. like Tarzan like he really lived mm-hmm. and Doc Savage's Apocalyptic Life a book that was like a bio a fake bio and oh. that they have, and he didn't later. A lot of people expand. He expanded on it. He basically treated it like Doc Savage lived in the same universe as all the other literary pulp heroes, like you know, from James yeah. Bond, you name it, all of them. Yeah, the Doc Savage oh. character, Doc the Savage, character based Cars on the Shadow Sherlock, as well. Sherlock really? Holmes, yeah. In oh, other words, it's so good. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore is totally ripped from all from uh, Philip Jose, Jose Farmer. Read a book huh. called Doc Savage's Apocalyptic Life and Tarzan Alive. They're great books. They're from the, the 70s, 60s and 70s. And then uh, from that, he used to write some different texts and different things. And mm-hmm. Eventually, he started calling it Wald Newton, W-O-L-D, Newton. It was a universe that tied all the literary characters together. And that's where that comes from. And, and that and Moore did some things with it with the Gleam of Extraordinary Gentleman. And now and Ellis with Planetary did it mostly with comics, but he actually has a, there's a Doc Savage character, as you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's another one, yeah. so. Yeah, it's pretty great. I know stuff. exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's actually kind of crazy how much easier it is to understand this particular multiverse story compared to other multiverse story where things get so, like, I, I use the word a lot, but I'm just going to say again because it's relevant, convoluted. This it story is, feels yeah. actually organized. Yes, it does. And He's good, but what else is good at that? Else is very good at that, and that's something like it makes you realize, especially some. Yeah, I've noticed whether it was the comics I was enjoying in the two thousands and the ones not so much in the twenty tens. I realized a lot of guys who are trying to do the multiverse, just not only do they not do as well, but how many comics basically just borrowed elements from planetary. They just feel mm. like lesser carbon carbon copies in some regards too. They're like, wow, all these comic books totally ripped off Planetary and I didn't even no. know it. But he's very derivative himself, so he's, he did a lot of ripping too. But that's okay. Oh, I, oh yeah. Of- well, see, but his, his is made to be intentional. Like he when you see like the story about, that's yeah, a homage really to good. like Japanese uh, revenge flicks or the kaiju issue, the Matrix yeah. issue, the the um was a Vertigo character issue, the issue where it's all about the Vertigo characters. It's so it's mm. really good. It's really good yeah. stuff. And the only yeah. last, you know, it's, it's based from 1999 to 2009, and mm-hmm. he had got a whole 27 issues and a few festivals. Mm-hmm. But it was special. It was good, and I'm glad. I'm, I want to get that book that you got there. That's pretty cool. Dude, it's I'm gonna go back and read book. it soon. Good. Um, all right, before I talk off two more books I'm reading, and we'll we'll pass off to the rest of the dudes on things we've been reading. What's up, Stephen M. Kellel? How's it going, Tim Hayes? And I, I am quite the man of culture. It seems like you must be as well, Vulcan. And uh, mm. we, I want to do a, a cheers and shout out to lovely Sherry. Obviously, for this one's gonna go out to her dad tonight, even though it's St. Paddy's yeah. Day weekend. I obviously obviously I saw the news online. On Twix, so this one's your dad, Sherry. All right, what's happening? Not speed to him. What's happening? I don't know. He's but not God doing speed. so well. He's not oh, doing so well. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Sherry. I hope he gets. I hope he feels better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So okay. 
And before I go on on two more comics I'm reading, um, what's up, Fenrir? Fen. Hey there, guys, ladies Welcome and gentlemen, back. and everybody else. How's it going? And uh, guys, mm. don't go, I don't want to kind of freak you out right now. But okay. Maybe I'm drunk, but I'm seeing a leprechaun right now. <laughs> Oi, you have. No, that's not the alcohol talk. You're seeing it this week. That's right. Ah. Ah, for a second, I was worried. <laughs> great, great, great. Well, great. You know. He has your lucky charms. Well, you know, <laughs> what what you, to appropriate to appreciate is what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fenrir, good to have you, sir. Um, All right. Two more things I want to go on about one of them. Clobby, I remember when I pitched it, when I said, hey, I think this is the book I want to do. I have now read the first issue, and now I can safely say, set in stone, this is the story I want us to do. Oh, you and I, Mono and Mono Show, the Justice Society series from Lance Rizuski. Okay. And I read the first issue, oh, it's fun, and huh? I had so much fun. I'm like, that's it. That's going to be the one. This is it. This is it. So you know what? we just, you know just got to figure out a date, but this okay. is it. That's By the way, the Dick, one. I'm reading the prequel to it now because I was about to start back and rereading those. And I decided there's a book before that about okay. uh, in 1986 called, I don't know if you're familiar with it, called The Last Days of the Justice Society. I know of it. I do know of it. 68-page yeah. one-shot by Roy Thomas. The, the scan's terrible in that book. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, it shows how they were... It's funny, Roy Thomas opens up the book with a premise saying, this is a story I never wanted to write. I did not want to write this because he was basically just flat out saying, this is right up to crisis. Yeah, they screwed his characters over. Now at least we're going to give him a proper goodbye. That which happened with Superman. You know, it's right when they were revamping everybody. And so it is sad and it's, 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 you know, what they do have to do to the characters. But it is a combo fitting ending. Well, if you notice in that first issue that you read, it's kind of referring to that a little bit like they just came back. From Valhalla, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. so yeah, but that is. I'll I'm glad it. you enjoyed I'll it. Read it. No, uh, I, yeah, this, this is this gonna, is it. I have now I'm gonna, officially I'll let made you know up how my mind. You don't read. Yeah, but oh, no, good, I, we'll do it. I, I, I'm will, All I'm just saying is, I'm willing to do it all, all the issues, and we can have like a nice overview panel on it. But I've, I, sure. we just got to figure out the date. But yeah, I'm thinking maybe whatever, late man. April, early March. But I'm officially decided this is the start. Nice. We keep batting around ideas. Oh, this one, maybe this one. No, this is a lot of fun. It was a fun book. This is so much fun. Oh, man. I'm just like, I can't wait to read more. The old timers love those old timer heroes. Dude, I I had such a joy with this issue. I I, I felt good reading. I felt good. I'm glad. I felt good. (laughs) It's nice to hear. I'm the same way. I love that book. So that's our one. Uh, And of course, Florida Man versus Hogzilla is so (laughs) much. Fun. I got my copy in the mail and uh it is a blast. I showed off my copy. Uh I'll, I'll get out later, but from Stone Loki. Uh we shot on, on the combo round table, Stone Loki, Kalabi, Marky the C24. And it is such a fun book, dude. Oh, it is so much fun. It and it's fun. so ridiculous. It it it's actually there are moments I was bursting laughing. Like <laughs> it's I hope there's a third comic. I know the second one did very well on his numerous campaigns from my comic Indiegogo Kickstarter. He did all three of them, and it, he did well. I know he eclipsed his numbers from last time. And dude, his <laughs> Gary Duba character, <laughs> the fact that he has this catfish that he talks to from underwater that he oh, only sees after he looks a frog. I'm not joking. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> this is really real. And this fish, okay, this fish has uh, dirt on this fish has dirt on Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Who doesn't? But I'm it, just kidding. It, wow. it, oh! <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, no, that's uh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, it's it it was I had such uh once again another book I had fun. For very different reasons, of course. And later I'm going to show up the cool posters. Clobby saw the cool posters I got with it. But, yeah, man, cool. I had so much fun with this comic. And if you're one of those people who wanted it, is, is it worth buying? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Please buy it. It was so much fun. Mike Barron, absolutely. Mike Weldon, I as penciler. 
all those guys on the team, they absolutely deserve your money from that. They absolutely deserve it. I've not read Legion, but yeah, I know my guy Bobby like, here. He knows his Legion. Yep, we're covering every we're covering all the silver and bronze age running on J Man's channel on Mondays. I think Muhammad knows that. He's been there. Good dude. And, Muhammad Al Saeed. Oh, he's funny? a real good dude. Real good dude. And he is, man, he he knows I hammer out the readings. Oh, he's been I reading some old it. stuff. He loves yeah. the old stuff. No, it, it's great. I love seeing that. What's up, Sean yeah. Franklin? Welcome to the show. I don't know if I have or hey, have Sean. not seen you here before. If you have and I don't remember, Welcome. I apologize. Howdy. But Welcome to the show. Let enjoy yeah. enjoy your stay here. We have a nice, good, all fulfilling night of drunkenness and comic books. So that's what we do. All right. Um, Caster uh, is Caster still gone? Oh, he just got here. Caster. So, <laughs> outside of Transformers, what other comic books have you been enjoying lately? So I've been slowly going through uh, a. But it's a bit of some 80s stuff lately. Kind of, I'm getting a, a bit of a kick for that. And so I've been going through about one issue a week of G.I. Joe, and I'm I'm about 40, 42 issues in so far of that. Holy crud. Wow. Which, wow. <laughs> nice. Dang. It is fantastic stuff. Just kind of, I'm like, the... All the the Energon Universe stuff really kind of kicked me into it. I'm like, I want to go read up some of this book, classic stuff, and it is it is fantastic. It is just every week there's a new adventure with these characters all going going off and and you know having all these cool military adventures where like oh, uh, Cobra is has this big master plan where like they've hidden like a base on the bottom of like the Gulf of Mexico that they've met that the Joes then go and like uh bomb. Which was all according to like the Cobra, the plan of the Cobra, so that they could go and yeah. create an island that they could capture for the for sovereign territory in the name of Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like what's what's happening next? I get I gotta wait till Monday before I can read the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and then I'm also reading Wolverine. Oh, regular series, uh, the oh. ongoing series. Yes, the oh. uh, I believe what job did some of it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Which it's it's a lot of it's a lot of the stuff that you 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 would expect sort of out of like Wolverine Adventures where he's off in uh he's oh what he's off in he's off in like the Asian country and I I can never remember the name of the the island nation he was on. Mm -hmm. Uh kind of a Shanghai type location where it's yeah. like every where everything's highly corrupt and he's having to deal with the, with the underworld. And he's fighting like the Silver Samurai in here, and it's 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 a, it's a good little book. It's Wolverine getting to be the best of what he is, but he can't go around being Wolverine openly. So he's taking on this identity of Patch. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah I it's Wolverine that with an eye patch. Yeah, I think John Byrne started that run. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like he's he's fighting Silver Samurai, who I believe had at some point seen him, but he just doesn't acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And then Wolverine gets possessed by a sword. Wow. Oh, okay. I think I remember that. The the Muramasa blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, wow. Yeah, that's a good run. I mean, it it went for like what 170 issues or so. It, it went over for a nice long, like uh, about 150 plus issues. So it's mm. big run. Yeah, it, one that sold really well. I like it. I like it. That's what I like to hear. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Wolverine, Patch Era. Man, fucking awesome. Mike, is is this what good is this what having good comics is like? Because yeah, yeah. All right. you know the funny thing yeah. and the funny thing, Caster? At that point, I was such a snob. I was around, I was a little bit younger than you when those were coming out. I wouldn't, I was gotten sick of Marvel in the mid 80s. They weren't mm -hmm. good enough for me. I was like, oh man, DC's doing all the stuff with Alan Moore. They got Miller now. They got all these other stuff. And all these great independent comics are out. Shooter was like filling with hacks and they had crappy art in a lot of those books. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't buy it. Now I look back on them. Yeah, they're kind of cool. They're still, I still have a lot of the same feelings about them. But you look back at them now and I go, they just don't look anywhere as bad as this new stuff. And they're still, mm -hmm. even the hackiest stuff Marvel did in their 80s books. Very hacky. 
is so much whoa. better than this crap now. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What are we talking about, Clobby? Like, you don't want to read about like a paraplegic sentry? Only if he's talking about his fifi. I do. Sure. <laughs> Only if he's at the coffee shop talking about his fifis. <laughs> oh. Especially what they're going to do. I'm going to need extra alcohol here and that. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I also I also did get one book in the mail today that I, just, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it's one you might recognize, Nick. Go ahead and show it off. I'll, I'll zoom. Oh, 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 he got it, too. Ooh. And he got the specific cover. I got the. Did you get the poster of that, too? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was going through my mail and I'm looking. I'm like, looking. I'm like, oh yeah, I ordered this and it dawns me. Wait a minute. I don't think I actually read the first one. I'm going back through my stuff and sure enough, I have it. Oh, yeah. I guess it means I got to read both of them now. <laughs> oh darn! Mm -hmm. mm. Just good luck you got, man. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike Barron's got a lot of, of, of experience with with comedy. Such a good versatile writer. Did you ever read Badger? You love Badger, and this yes. a lot of sounds a lot of this sounds like Badger. I have read Badger. Mike Barron is really good with humor, and humor in comics is like a really a uh, tricky thing, really mm -hmm. tricky thing. And Mike Barron really understands the concept Absolutely. very well. He knows how to oh, yeah. actually make you, and he he makes you actually like laugh out loud not the l of like actually laughing and he yeah. also knows how to take characters who are absolutely ridiculous but give them a heart to them too because he, uh, he has these really ridiculous characters and he really makes yeah. you care for them because even though they're they're ridiculous they do like have humility to them and that's cool to see and I, I, I and I think that's what helps make these characters so like lovable even though some of them are just kind of like goo balls but that they're like, oh, but at the end of the day, they're still well meaning characters, and I, I love that. And oh boy, he, the fact that he has the wrestling league, and one of the characters' name is Steely Danielle. <laughs> oh god, and the other one's name is Black Dildo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I want to say. This comic <laughs> is hilarious. Yeah, Florida oh. Man versus Hogzilla is a very recommended reading. I'm not going to well, spoil anything else. And lucky you'll probably all forget that. And then you'll still break. Oh, oh yeah, that is fun. So see, it, it, it gets a recommend. Yes. I can't wait for Gooding either. After seeing Will Conrad was going to be drawing that book. I'm looking forward to that. Cause he did one of my favorite issues on the Venditti run of Hawkman. So I'm really looking forward to Will Conrad. And that he's a good fit for Gooding, hmm. but yeah, go ahead. Castle. Okay. You had something you well, want to add. Oh, I was going to say, I've got two. I've got two weeks to read these now, and then hopefully I'll be able to come back and give you my book report. Oh, I expect it. I want. I want a full report. Nine a.m. at my desk, Johnson. <laughs> Three to five paragraphs it has to be double spaced. Double spaced, well. perfect looking, fantastic. It's gotta be the best thing I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> it's gotta be huge. It's gotta be huge. And, uh, and, and you gotta write in certain words. They need to be emphasized with the capitals and they gotta look bigly. huge. <laughs> bigly. <laughs> and don't forget the TPS reports. Oh. <laughs> That's see? just uh, as I said it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Comic relief. Yeah. So outside of, I guess you could say, Energon, ha has there been any books you've been enjoying, new and or old? Uh, let's see. Well, um, I've read Duke issue three. So okay, yeah, that was really good. The Energon verse. That was really good. Yeah, I like where it's going so far. Um, I kind of like, I like how you know everything is nicely integrated, but you know, in the same way, they're kind of keeping it its own thing, which is great, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm liking that. Um, recently I'm reading, um, Saga. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, reading all of that. And Ooh. that's not a half bad story so far. I'm actually quite liking yeah, it. Yeah, but I really much. hear it gets downgraded on issue 50 or something. Oh God, don't spoil it. Stuff. <laughs> so how, how far, how far in are you? Cause I, I actually, um, I have, I have read Saga. 
Okay, I think I'm around issue twenty five ish, twenty six, something like that. So was mm-hmm. was that when the the parents showed up? Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Around there. Yeah. Yep. I <laughs> I, 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 went, I went to Red Saga, but I heard it's about a bunch of gay samurais in a mountain with horses. You're you close. know, typical kind yeah. of film you see on. Uh, well. <laughs> well, the thing with the thing with Saga was it, it it does have this interesting story about these kind of these two these two soldiers from opposite sides of a war yeah. who've come together and have a child who's the book as the book is kind of told is basically like her by her diary t- sort of telling the story of her childhood. Yeah, and I if I remember if memory serves, she winds up becoming supposed to be some sort of great hero, is she not? I think so, something like that. Yeah, so. It's basically told from her point of view. The only reason why I'm reading this is because uh, there's a, a director in Calgary that uh, I've done some graphic design work for, um, you know, that works in TV and stuff like that. And he actually recommended this book to me to read. He's like, it's a really great, fantastic read. So if you want to read something really good, check out Saga. So, yeah. So I thought, okay, fine. I'll give it a shot. And uh, so far, it's a pretty decent story. So I'm not, I'm, I'm liking it's- it pretty good. It's it's got some really interesting character designs. Like uh, I like the yeah. prince, t- the TV head prince. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought, oh god, this is getting really surreal. Kind of, you know, like how does that even work? So, but it's like, all right, fine. It's a comic book, you know. It's like you know, out in space and kind of like the you know, why question that kind of thing, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. But yeah, some of the character designs are really weird. <laughs> but yeah, so far so good. It's a pretty good story. Um, and other than that, um, I mean, you know, aside from, you know, reading comics and stuff like that, uh, I've checked out, um, Shogun. That's actually going pretty good. I'm liking that. Um, let's see. Invincible, uh, came out, I think it was like today. So I well, the episode. Yeah. yeah the episode. I, it was really good. It was a really good episode. I really so, enjoyed gotta it. I gotta say it was way more brutal than the actual comic. Yeah. It was brutal. So I've tried to catch those little things in the middle of, you know, getting these character designs done, you know, in the meantime. So I haven't had a lot of reading to do. Oh, well, you know, and Transformers, obviously. So I caught that, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, if just to throw one more thing on the pile for you. Right. There is an an there is a current anime that's out that is, I is highly recommended by okay. me. Okay. It's unlucky. a series called. It's a series called ba- Brave Bang Bravern. Okay. Uh, but it's it's you know a bunch of it's a slightly futuristic uh, sci-fi series, right? Uh, with like kind of a joint military operation with like the U.S., Japan, that, and then aliens attack, and all seems lost. It's it's all going to hell, right. and then this big old super robot. Bravern shows up to like save the day and he's like icky i'm here to save the day they have no idea how he knows any of their names but he's like the best thing around they're they're, they go to start fighting like aliens underwater and the cock and he's got his cockpit filling up with water it's getting super oxygenated and he's like this is just like the abyss you're like how do you know about the abyss yeah nice i've been watching a lot of um delicious and dungeon too that's that's another one yeah Um, that's a fun one so I'm like if, that so which actually Nick, you might like that because it's all about it's all about the food in the dungeon. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. On Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I still want to watch Blue Eyed Samurai. I've been meaning to want to watch that. Dude, you That's, gotta watch yeah, that. Here, I've been hearing for gotta say it's pretty good. who I really uh, respect that they it's good. And I'm probably not gonna be able to get to it in the next week because all I, I've had time this week, I've only watched I guess you could say proper TV once this week, and that was Invincible mm. and Police Academy. And I next week I got uh, I got watch Ghostbusters next few days, and then I got you no know, the trip to Houston with Stella. So it's and we're gonna be hanging out with people from all over the country and from out of the country next week. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a very busy week. Right. I'm gonna try to like squeeze in a video before we take off, so that way I can leave people the video before I go. Maybe if if I'm lucky, it'll be Dean Kane All American Lawman review if it comes in on time because my yeah. copy did ship from Gabe El Taib. So if if I get it on time, I will review it and 
hammer that video out and put it out before I head out for nice for the for Texas. So we'll, we'll see though. If not, I'll have to, I'll figure something else out. I know we're gonna hear from Mark next week, Mark Miller, about what are his next five comics, and we already know <clears> one <throat> of them being Nemesis Rogues Gallery. I can't wait to see what the air four will be. I'm really hoping one of them is a sequel to Huck. I, I truly be, even if it's not that, I know he's working on a follow up. I know that he is. Yeah, I just want him to Fair finish Light Jupiter's Light. legacy. It's been almost two years and no date. It's been more than that. It's been like five, six, seven years <laughs> since the last came out. No, we're talking Requiem. That, that's the other, the, the most yeah, recent it's one. Been it's been all, yeah. it's tough like around the six issues. Years ago. It's more than it feels like three or four years ago. It's been a while. I know time is flown by. I, I get why you may have uh, mistaken it, but it it's been a bit, man. It has been a bit. Yeah, you know? the story was we'll getting see. pretty good. We'll, we'll I feel like we'll I've gotten blue balled. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But either way, I my guess is he's going to announce of his five books. He's going to announce of three of them will be follow ups to previous stories, and two of them will be brand new stories. Uh, that yeah. seems. Makes sense for him, and I do like he's got that Valerio Jean Giordano. I can't pronounce his name, who's like an Italian artist doing Nemesis Rose Gallery. And after right. the way Big Game ended, I feel bad for every character in that universe. Hmm. Every character, because Nemesis is one of those rare characters I can actually say is absolutely terrifying. Nemesis is a very terrifying character. Yeah, if you it's one of those things you gotta read Nemesis to know how absolutely crazy he is and messed up he is. Mm. So I can't wait to see what he's got up his sleeve. But you know what? We we got other gentlemen here. I want to hear what they've been reading, and then we're gonna we'll move on to Transformers. So common nerd. I know you've been being busy being a dad life. Have you been able to squeeze anything in or have you not? Um oh. I did get through all the Transformers. <laughs> All the oh. new ones. That was really so should pretty we say epic. that for the Transformers conversation? <laughs> yeah, we should probably say okay. that for the Transformers conversation, but wow, what an ending. Mm. Um and then I did under uh, I have actually been I did actually get through the first issue of Astro City under Clobby's recommendation. Um that was really good. That was a lot of fun. I'm working my way through the second issue of that right now. Um and then I've also been balls deep in this real this incre- there's so there's this so is, I'm going to nerd out of Warhammer 40K for a second. Um, cause somebody was talking about television shows earlier, so I'm going to talk about a book. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, there's this, there's been this storyline going on inside of Warhammer 40K for like 25, 30 years called like the Horus Heresy, right? And mm-hmm. we know what happened at the end of the Horus Heresy, but we don't know the details of what happened at the battle in the final mm-hmm. moments. Like we don't know exactly, exactly what happened, right? So there's been this three-issue novel series that has come out over the last few months that are the last three books in the story. They're like 18 hours long on audiobook, and there's three of them. Wow. (laughs) And so, like, I got, like, 10 hours left through the second one, and, like, every chance I get whenever I go to a showings, whenever I got to drive somewhere, I'm popping that little sucker in because it is... It is crazy. It's one of those if you like if you like trying to if you like trying if you like five or six stories or yeah four yeah five or six stories going on at once, like it's a lot of fun. Like it took me probably halfway through the first book before I figured out who all the hell we were even following. Mm-hmm. But like it's all these great epic battle scenes. Like there's all this mystery, this intrigue. They're in like this psycho crazy ship that's got like the the, the walls are made out of human flesh. And, like, they moan and they goo when you step on them. And it's, like, crazy, nasty, wild, crazy shit. But I just, I, I can't put that stuff down every chance I get it in. Because they've got a lot of crazy psychic stuff going on. And there's space battles. And, like, the chaos demons are everywhere. So you've got all the magic and mysticism and fantasy. Plus guys with really big guns just blowing the living hell out of each other. Like, if you like siege warfare. If you like reading stories about, like, how siege warfare worked during, like, World War II. They actually, some of the factions go into, like, details about what they're doing for the siege warfare. So... It, it's wild, it's a lot, it's intense, and it's literally been like the culmination of like 25, 30 years inside of the Warhammer 40k universe before we're finally getting, quote unquote, the ending to this story. So, yeah, you guys you guys talk about having to wait a few years for the next comic book issue. Come on now. I don't want to disrespect <laughs> you, but come on, audiobook, come on. You, you know, when it comes to Warhammer, I do not have time to, to read. 
Try, I but I have that, five kids. So I have yeah. five kids. Find me a time where I can sit down and read, and somebody is Learn not at my fail butt. at shooting, dude. I can. I can drive. Me. I can drive down the road for thirty minutes or forty-five minutes. Go show some apartments and have that earbud in my ear the entire time. I can do like two hours. Audio of that books book. are awesome, man. I love those. Well, one you hammer know, can only be read with heavy you know, metal. You, you might have more time to read if you weren't busy trying to pop like on that. an entire you need heavy football team. Metal. With Warhammer, yeah, you gotta you gotta listen to some of these voice actors, man. There's some of them. They're great. They're really they're great. good. They're I love audiobooks. Yeah, mm. yeah. Some of the stuff. Star Wars audiobooks that when they were adapted, good novels are really good. Yeah. Oh so, my God, Star they Wars. They, 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 would, they would have. Classic. They would be bringing all the sound effects with it as well. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh God, yeah. And that guy, one guy, I forgot that guy's name, was the best when he would read the Star Wars books, the yes. Timothy Zahn ones or something. Like, they had a couple guys. That were no, no, I'm not saying audiobooks terrific. are bad. I'm just saying. There's a rule when it comes to Warhammer. You need right. heavy metal while, while experiencing. I'll tell my son well, he's, or, being, he's being bad. And we'll we'll some well. Fenrir, Fenrir, if you're spending all the money building an army, you don't exactly have the 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 you don't even, you don't even have the shelf space for books beyond yeah. the entire. Well, and you can the listen to the audio books while you army. build your yeah. You can listen to your audio book while you build your miniatures and paint and yeah, do all that kind of shit. Yeah, without the heavy metal, it just ain't feeling right. It just, They've all got a it takes, it, background too. It, it takes so much time to go paint Necrons. Oh, no, thank you. That's why I don't. What's up, Abigor? How you doing, buddy? Abigor, foul <laughs> demon. Silver everything. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, was that all for you, commoner? Thank you, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's really all I've got. Like things have been crazy. I've been trying to. I've been streaming a lot. Been putting out a lot of content over on the new YouTube channel. Um, those have been getting some cool views. I mean, hitting the algorithm just right, and everybody's getting all cranky. And I, like, people don't like my opinion on Dune, and that's pretty funny. Um, but uh, and uh, uh, what is your opinion that, on yeah, Dune? Just, just trying to raise money for the Vegas not trip right I now, do too. Not yeah, care not, about Dune. yeah, not not this show, not for this show. You can come hang out on. My, I come hang out on Vets talking tomorrow night. I'm sure we're going to talk. No all disrespect about that if you love Dune on the chat. I am all sorry. Right. I, I am genuinely speaking. Sorry, I just I yeah, is, is not. It's I'm just not curious. I mean, I'm a. I mean, uh, I'm, that, I'm, I'm, if I'm a dude enjoyer, but uh, get brought up, it goes for another 20, 30 minutes. Name one. It does. Shoulder. That's why I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm All gonna, right, I'm wait. I, I, I have yeah, a I'm trying to raise money to get to Vegas. So come hang out on my then. channel. <laughs> All right. So, how far are you guys in One Piece? I am currently. I'm, where am I at? Right I've now? made it to Wano recently. That Wano is Wano. Are you talking manga or are you talking anime? Yes. Manga. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I anime, haven't watched manga. I, I stopped trying with anime. I'm going to try. <laughs> Keyword, before I go to Houston, I'm going to try to get book four on Monday. That way, when I'm on my flight, I can read book four, five, and six on the plane. Mm. Fingers crossed yeah. that I can do that. Right. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm just, I'm glad, I'm glad you're not like, it, at, you're like, not like at one of the really high key points because, like, there's a story about like manga story and he was he was there's one of the chapters that kind of happens later on mm -hmm. uh really sad moments so you get into like a character's backstory and it's full on like one of the most heart-wrenching devastating things he's reading this on the plate he's sobbing like a little girl he's sobbing like a child on this plate as he's reading manga over over this backstory mm -hmm. which uh wait how, how far think. did you get jesse what uh, how far I have you gotten I am currently still where um, uh, what's his face with the little bubble power, the one where he can turn the shield, the the surgeon, where him and uh, Don Flamingo, yeah, I'm st they're still all beating up on Don Flamingo. Uh, yeah, everybody's beating up on Don Flamingo at this point, trying mm. to so, finish him off finally. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just Rosa. Right, because yeah, I haven't watched I'm, anything in a few weeks, so. So I I just kind of jump back into rewatching through it, and I'm 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 at water seven. Mm -hmm. In, mind you, this is a rewatch. This is a revisit for me. Right, so, right, but right. It's like, no, it's it it is it, it's, it's so good stuff. It's such good stuff. Just you know, be careful when you're when you're getting into like any's lobby. Mm -hmm. Honestly, One Piece is impossible okay. to fail at this point. I mean, the ending could literally just be a cliffhanger, and it it just can't fail anymore. <laughs> it it's was just the too friends big. they made along the way. There you go. That was the real. That was the real One Piece. The friends they made along the way. Like, yeah. I'm coming for it's you, like, Odo. I'm uh, coming for you, Odo. Caster, 
like seriously, I really, really hope I I get a hold of book four on, on Monday. I really do. I really want. I really want to. I really do want to get on this. I'm not. It is driving me crazy because I, I do. I still feel that bug, that energy of that excitement after I had watched the live show. I want more One Piece. Trust me on that. <laughs> True. Believe now, the that. live action was nothing. Believe oh, it. I loved Wait, it. wrong series. I loved it. All right. Yeah. Um, two things. One, welcome to the show, Pablo. Howdy ho. How you doing, buddy? Apparently, apparently, apparently talking One Piece summons him. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 that's what it was. And not the uh, numerous out the about fifty minutes we were talking crap about him. I would just say last I'm week finished. was a bit of a remission. Uh, the fact that Obviously, because of Akira Toriyama, One Piece didn't come out at all on manga or on anime. Oh, man. I have a bit of a withdrawal. I need my One Piece fix. Mm. <laughs> oh, crack. Yeah, I, you're preaching to the yeah, water, Last man. week was hell. I have oh. seen guys in my neighborhood cry. I'm not even That's joking. Really. What, wow. you the new one, Mr. Wake, uh yeah, uh because of the death of Akira Toriyama. Um Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh the you creator not... of, oh, yeah, the creator of One Piece uh, was Akira Toriyama assistant uh, for a while. Uh, yeah. Also yeah. Masashi Kishimoto, the the creator for Naruto. So uh, obviously One Piece just stopped and is mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. understandable uh was kind of one of his best friends of all time was uh, the guy that guided him into creating one piece and the way to create a really interesting character so uh, yeah i can i can see why uh, he needed to rest but it was a bit oh, of yeah, uh, yeah. you have yeah. not since, lived since until Pablo's... you've seen a six foot tall Huge, muscly black guy cry over a Japanese man he's never actually met. I mean, God. <laughs> with reason. Dude, with absolute My reason. neighborhood has been weird, weirdly depressing. My son pretty rough. Pretty rough. You have not... You couldn't go through a, a block without seeing a black guy crying. Seriously, the power of Yama had in people. It, it is insane. Yeah, it, true. It's, it's insane because it's like... That was what that series, Jesus like, came uh, back that and died again. Up, that series wound up like doing a lot, doing more for race relations in like around the world than anything else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, didn't the cartel literally just stop just just for that man? Yeah, like, they're like, eh, we're taking a day off. Like, I think like what was it? I mean, the the cut like Peru had to like make an announcement on like their official like government. Too. Yeah, yeah. Salvador. I mean, that alone uh, made, just uh, says he deserves a statue. No, let's make the whole month his. All of March Pablo. should be a Kira Toriyama month. Since you're here and you're fresh and lubed up, um, why don't you tell our ever so excellent, exquisite chat what you've been enjoying on the reading side of things lately? Uh, we will be talking about that really, really soon, Transformers. Oh, I, outside yeah. of that, have you not read anything else? Because we will have, we'll talk Transformers too. But ha anything else outside I'll of that? I'll be completely honest. The last uh, three days uh, before today was a bit of a hellish situation because I had mm -hmm. to finish a video, but also okay. I had to go and play Magic the Gathering. But also there was a confusion on the video. Then ah. yeah, so. Week. Because it's like, what, four, three or four videos this week? Oh, dude, if you haven't seen, uh, the video that I was editing is about the three-body problem. It's a I Chinese novel it. that really yeah, good. Netflix is adapting. And uh, the issue is that for making that video, I had to go back to the Doom miniseries, the Doom uh, 1984 movie. I had to go back and trace uh, things from Game of, uh, Game of Thrones, from House of the Dragon. Uh, wow. So uh, literally, uh, just for doing that video, I had to quote, unquote, mm, uh, legally get, mm -hmm. uh, I think, 70 uh, gigabytes oh. of content. Holy and moly. they go uh, through everything to get the screenshots. 
70 gigabytes? Damn. Yeah. Uh, because uh, if you want to get the best resolution for the images uh, when you are uh, editing something on, I do, yeah. uh, I use After Effects. And sometimes if you use uh, 180p uh, uh, captures of anything, when you do the final rendering, it will get some artifacting and everything. And it doesn't mm -hmm. look really nice. So what I do uh, is get the 4K version and print screen from that on the 4K monitor. So I get a 4K print screen that I can use, uh, obviously reduced to 180p. The videos normally are rendered on 180p, but you don't get any artifacting. Everything looks crisp and nice. So that quality, actually, I enjoy on the videos. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, I get things like, for example, the Doom movie on 4K, the least quality that you can get at the uh 2020 uh doom movie uh, 2020 2021 uh, it doesn't matter um it's uh 40 gigabytes but that one i already had on my plex so it didn't matter but yeah. the doom mini series uh the dune uh, 1984 movie i didn't have them handy and game of thrones it was painful going back to season eight and taking the screenshots from season eight because even season seven, I still had hopes for them not fucking it up. Season right. eight, they just absolutely butchered everything they have done on almost a decade of television. So it got me salty, really, really salty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Benioff and Wise have another series and they butcher it too. So, yeah, figures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't really have uh, m uh, much time to read anything this week, yeah, but no, figure we'd uh, ask around the panel before we have a proper transition. That's all. Okay, uh, but Transformer was really, really great. <laughs> oh, we'll, 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 we're gonna get to there real soon, my friend. We're gonna get there. Oh, uh, before we go to anything, uh, Iron. I finally decided a way to make my deck salty enough to, uh, for people to just drop from the table. I made a tribal deck. You know what's the tribe? Frog? Infinite, infinite combos. It's oh. a whole infinite combos deck. <laughs> oh. I'm that asshole now. People <laughs> got... I got defeated so many times trying to be the good guy that I finally snapped. Mm -hmm. I'm the asshole now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Clobby, yeah, outside buddy. of Daredevil and uh, the Legion, has there been anything else you've been reading, going back and enjoying? Or yeah. is there anything you want to add about Daredevil that you're mm -hmm. realizing maybe more so now that you didn't notice back then? Whichever you want to answer, or both. Oh, yeah, it is great. It is great going back. I highly recommend going back and uh, going to those old, starting Daredevil from Miller's Daredevil from his beginning oh, of it, yes. So but uh, also because uh, of our Legion of Superheroes reviews we've been doing, we've been, we're in Jim Shooter's infancy as a writer. He was like 14 years old. You may not mm -hmm. some know the story how he broke into what writing for DC Comics at the age of 13 slash four, you know, not too far from 14 years old. And um, it's interesting. Some he's some of his writing, even as a 14 year old, was really good on that. Well, I've but he's had he has other there's other things written that's not so popular but one of his more, uh, more popular works aside from his legion work was uh about a decade or so later when he was working at marvel as an editor mm -hmm. he had a pretty long stint on avengers which is considered a classic run on avengers and i decided yeah. to go back and revisit that and i'm about eight nine issues and he did it for a good while mm -hmm. and so this they considered some of the best you know, and again that's my favorite roster of the avengers it was a time that was not too it was around the time I first started picking it up a lot at the time way back when when it came out. Mm -hmm. And um, or it was a couple of years after it actually, but I remember going back and forth on Avengers. And then I started somewhere around when he was right before him. And then, but I, I, stuck, I remember reading through his entire run way, way back then. But it's been, I suppose, since the early the mid 70s, late 70s. I think it was like 70, I want to say 77, 79, somewhere up in there. But, hmm. um, and it, 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 it's interesting. This is like a decade after he started writing as a, 14 year old the type his writing uh style and 
uh, definitely evolved. And of course, you know, it, it's it was a bit different. It was another super team like the Legion, but it was Marvel's flagship. So he, uh, or not, well, the FF is their flagship, but you know what I mean. It was it was their bigger a bigger title for them, the Avengers. And uh, I love his roster. It's interesting going back and, and reading that now. It has some great art. I mean, Salvia Sema sorted out on it, but all of it's inked by Pablo Marcos, who was such a powerful inker. That it, mm -hmm. after Sema, John Byrne, I came on there for a couple of issues. It was a good. So then, now, and then after that, it's George Perez for a good solid long run with Pablo Marcos. So it's beautiful art. Uh, again, a good characterization, although a little bit kind of a bit. He has some issues. I have some issues with his characterization, and he seems to be. He's always been obsessed with godlike beings. Uh, mm -hmm. The Beyonder from one much later, if you're a Super Wars fan. Yeah, I had noticed that. All through that, yeah, the beginning of his run, they fight Graviton, they go right to Ultra, and then the Count Nefaria. It, it's all, and then and then like uh, uh, Michael Korvac. So he's always got to be the big saga, the big magnum opus. But it uh, works. Yeah, the Korvac saga. Korvac oh, saga boy. was his. So, yeah, but it's it's a great run, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and see it through because it's been so long since I've read it. You know, I just may as well. With my memory the way it is, if I hadn't read something in 30, 40 years, and it feels new, and this does. But it's a lot of fun going back and just reading those fun, great old comics like that. There's that, and you and I were talking about that Justice Society. That's but, our story. That's our story. Do. I've decided to – I read the first issue, as you did, and it was so much fun. Um, decided before I go back to reading the other ones, I think I'm going to go read uh, – it's a, this is a tough slog now, but the last days days of the Justice Society, which mm -hmm. was a sixty eight page one shot shot from nineteen sixty eighty six, Roy Thomas telling the story he never wanted to tell about mm -hmm. what happens to the Justice Society. But then, as you said, you got the nineteen ninety two series that you and I are going to read, the JSA with it at least they get brought back. But um, mm -hmm. so it wasn't all that final, like nothing in comics ever is. So I'm looking forward to you and I getting the chance to read that JSA book. So that's. I guess there's that there are those i do know that after we get through with this um miller run in a couple of weeks in april we start uh fantastic four all the whole kirby run one oh one through 102 mm -hmm. and all six annuals and then the dreaded uh the dreaded uh 108 sort of but we're gonna do it with the uh, well that's a long story but 108 was sort of a spiteful yeah. thing stanley did to jack at the time but it's a little, we're gonna cover the whole story so and that's that pretty much. It's all I've been sorry to go on like that. Oh, dude. So, well, the I think it was one of the books here. we need to talk about, Clobby. Hmm? Yeah, What's that? Right. What, a, what is I think it? The Immortal Iron Fist. Yeah, man, I tell you what, I don't think I can handle it, Kyle. But that, I, I, I don't want to know. I don't think I want to read it, buddy. I've looked at a lot of it. I don't want... Oh, I is okay, too. Iron Fist with guns? No. Now that cover made me up that of context. I got you. that's fair. Well, I was that's, talking that's to a friend of mine that I, I a, a friend it. of mine who I had this this one friend of mine who tells me when I ask him about a book, he knows me well enough. He goes, he says, "Don't you'll hate it," and he knows me enough. Now that doesn't mean it's always going to happen that way. Yeah, he but said that's I a valid reasoning as well. If he if no, he no, else but, knows your, I don't know, what? Caster, but for you, Caster, because I love you, <laughs> I I well, might I might go ahead and take a look at it. Well, I, I, like, I, I, I think like the art, but good. I think the initial like bit of it is is fascinating because it, it is sort of an ex expansion upon the world of Iron Fist, getting into the mystical city of Kunlun, the introducing other mystical cities with their own with their own champions. Does he really use guns? Eh, kinda, yeah, but that's not Danny. Uh, that's not Danny. No, oh, that's not no. Danny. Then what do I want to read an Iron Fist comic without Danny Rand? Oh, Dan Rand's in the story. Yeah. He's I, in yeah. the story. Trust me. On I that. trust this friend that says I would hate it, but I love That's you. Probably, oh, that could be true, too. Two things can be true. Oh, but I have no problem with reading something I hate. Shit, I'll just, I'll just hate it if I do. I can handle it. <laughs> I'm, you know, I really <laughs> my, honesty. I really I'll put on my uh, unstable molecules, big boy pants for the thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know. Because he's a big boy. Uh, I'm a big pile of orange rocks, and I can take it. <laughs> so, and if he doesn't like it, he'll run, he'll wipe scars. his big orange rocky ass with it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. Fenrir, <laughs> you live? Yeah. Oh yeah. What I'm have good. you been enjoying outside of Transformers? 
I've been mostly concentrating to the old, uh, mainly G.I. Joe stuff like Cash, or mainly the Duke books, and uh, I'm going back to Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow books, because I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get one at this point. We're going to get Scarlet in Japan with Arashi Kage, but not them. Wait for it's it. kind of disappointing a bit, but I, I get they want to build up everything else, and putting those two already on the spotlight would kind of take all the attention, because let's be honest, they're the coolest Joes, but... <clears throat> Yeah, it's still good. Mm-hmm. Mostly well, watching so cartoons. Okay. So, cartoons are well, awesome. I, I've got a working That's the stuff none of you would have ever seen because, let's be honest, you're, you guys are very old, so you've probably never heard of it. That's true. Well, no, only I'm old. Well, I don't know. Comic Relief Crusade is pretty old. <laughs> yeah, I'm old getting old. Not as old as me, but he's old. My bones hurt. I'm almost ancient. I think no. Pablo, Pablo might be old, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's, well, that's my account. reference. Uh, there's a uh, Magic the Gathering YouTuber that has uh, that intro where he goes, uh, uh, We are going to learn about magic. I'm a wizard, uh, vintage, vintage stuff, or something like that. I'm an old wizard, and then he does the transition. My bones hurt. <laughs> 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 oh, it's magic history. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We just go to Transformers because, man, I just really—it's always well, fun to watch Stars Green get beaten. We're gonna, we're gonna. All right, we'll, we're we're gonna get there now. I see. I want to acknowledge Dearest's comic really quickly because you know what? He's a, he's a, he's a you no know, regular listener on videos, the streams. I feel like we should highlight his comment. So he said, "I've been reading the Incredible Hulk Masterworks trade. It's silly fun." That's great to hear, dears. Yeah, I'll nice. let, awesome. let it keep filling me in as you go along. I'd like nice. to hear your thoughts, and that's why I like I like seeing these comments because I want to know what people are reading, and it, it excites me to hear people just still out there saying, you know, whether if they're unsatisfied with the reading now, they're going back and looking for something great from back then. That's the beauty of this. We are in an age where we can do that. It's awesome. So, thank you yeah, dears, for your superb comment. That's one of the nice things where, where there's so much good stuff behind us that the it's, we're at a point now where the modern books have to compete with their own past. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm enjoying the hell out Planetary. It's so great. It's so great. Planetary yeah. is awesome. Seriously. I think, yeah, Planetary. if you have a bit of a story with uh, your franchise, mm-hmm. you have two ways. One, uh, just keep repeating the same and uh, there's always a renewable source of eyes if you do it really well. The other one is instead of innovating like they have been, in, quote unquote, innovating uh, out of late that is just fucking it up, mm-hmm. uh, just try to innovate through spin offs that actually could end up being part of the main continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, that's something that they are doing with their job. Uh, I know, uh, I saw the comment Snake uh, is talking. Uh, is the new G.I. Joe proper uh, comic out? So what's go- what, what, they're, what, what Skybound is doing is the G.I. Joe book proper is just a continuation of of, of, of what will have been coming out. So oh, okay. uh, it's yeah. issue 301, 302, 303, etc. Because uh, what they are doing on the Energon universe uh, with Cobra Commando, uh, uh, for example, is actually working really good for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if they keep going with spin-offs that are not the main continuity, the main G.I. Joe, would well, they amplify the G.I. Joe? Cobra Commander are the Energon universe with Transformers and Void Rifles. G.I. Yeah. Joe, Real American Hero, is not. But, yeah. dude, if they just make a G.I. Joe comic based on this reality where everything is badass and cool as hell, I mean... Because uh, I remember when they had a commie on G.I. Joe and there was a lot of stupid shit, I, I stopped giving a, a damn shit. Uh, the movies also helped a lot for me not being interested on G.I. Joe because mm-hmm. the live action movies were absolute garbage. Oh, yeah. And yeah, snow yeah pretty much. But, but... Yeah. Uh, but if they keep going in this new universe where everything is rad, mm-hmm. I'm absolutely in if they launch a new G.I. Joe uh, series that is in this universe, I will be there because I'm 
I'm really hyped to see what they can do with that. I'm hyped uh, for seeing the technology that uh, the GI Joes can have because uh, Cobra is going for Energon. Uh, so mm -hmm. most likely you will have also the Joes using Energon, but, uh, Energon uh, but if they are using it in a way that maybe the United States government uh, helped develop with the, uh, let's just say, Optimus at this point has a way to actually do something with that kind of help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I won't go further until we get into the Transformers proper. But uh, yeah, uh, something with that technology on the G.I. Joe flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm absolutely in. So yeah, they can do something like this mm -hmm. and just keep expanding and expanding. And I think that's a real way to innovate because just changing the characters doesn't really feel good. Most of us have had some rebound on one series or another because they changed too much of the character. But here they are not changing the character. They are expanding the character without the other stuff. So they have full time to dedicate for this single character and make it good. And I want that. I really want oh, that. Oh, yeah. All right, I, I, I see your point. I typically love that expanding part, specifically on this version of Cobra Commander, who's basically a mix of all of his previous versions, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything right. from well, the that... human with the Cobra law, it's just going great. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, Clobby has to go. Um, he's got he's got he's He's got to go, and we're going to miss him, and he, he, he's got to get up early. So, Clobby, you will be missed, sir. But uh, you guys got it handled. You know, I don't know anything about, you know I don't know anything about that, uh, the guys, what you guys are talking about anyway. I'd be lost. But I, I, I'll miss you just the same. But, yeah, long, long it's been one of those I'm too old for this shit kind of days. But thanks for having me, bro. <laughs> got, to, got to get up early. Thanks for having me, buddies. I really appreciate you. Nothing to plug or anything other than we got Saturday Night Star Trek tomorrow. And, uh, you know, at 9 with Raquel, and of course. Uh, back to the grind there. And then on Mark's um, Monday night, no, Sunday night um, on Mark C, uh, D with the C's channel, rather. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we got the geek reel on that. So come join us there if you can. And uh, But other than that, just want to say thanks for having me, buddy. As always, it's always been sun hanging with my brothers here on the, on the great the great thir uh, 32 flavors of Nick Weiser's Friday Night Comics talk. Thank you well, all dude, very much. Justice Society Ooh. of America for you and I is next. So I'm on mm -hmm. it, brother. All right, dude. It. We'll, we'll all right, get that friend. day set up. Have a good night, sir. Have good a great weekend. Buddy. In case I'll talk to you. All Thanks, right, but buddy. Caster Finn Pablo, Comic Grave Crusader, Common Nerd, buddy. Uh, all of you out there in the chat, thank you all. Keep clobber on, my friends. Night, Clavi. Good night, buddy. Stay safe, brother. Thank night. you. Buddy. Transform and roll out. Yeah. Later, gators. <laughs> yeah. All right, dudes. And only six assholes remained. And then the six <laughs> assholes remained. All right. So we're going to talk Transformers now. And then we'll get into the stuff going on at the Riververse because it's about mm -hmm. damn time. Mm -hmm. So, um, guys, um, I'm just going to go over. Right now, for me, Transformers number six was not just a home run. It was a fucking grand slam. Yeah. I love that the comic had a lot of the, the Dan Johnson tropes that I know and love. And it felt like those tropes were weaving effortlessly into a Transformers comic book where it felt natural. Like the, you know this song. I'm like, yeah. I actually understand that. And I'm a yes. Transformers Nobi, and I understand that because he does a lot of his comics, whether it's his wrestling comic, a dual power bomb, his metal comic, um, Murder Falcon. He does those things. And of course, he loves action. You have a great splash mm -hmm. that's diet, like, no, sideways. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm a cup here, but I, I'll, I'll dig. Oh, I got it right here. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Whoa, whoa. Oh, let's get for that page. You guys you get an incredible ending. You get an incredible yeah. ending to this yeah. first arc. Really heartfelt ending. You get a great character moment with Sparky. Kinda, it's kind of heartbreaking. Moments. 
this book yeah, had so much greatness. And uh -huh. oh, dude, and dude, dude, I, I, dude, I want to do us. The Devastator. Got oh, yeah, the panel is great. Like, it was a wrestling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah That's flipped over cool. that mountain Real and deep. fell down, and his parts oh, yeah. kept falling apart, and he nailed it to his buddy. I was like, that's some great attitude era. And then look, he puts crush. I'm like, yeah, yes. he crushed his body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I wanted dude, to ask you guys. Dude, now you have the book oh. in your hands. There's actually one scene that I think just became pretty much the most badass in the whole franchise's history. Which is just the final lot, minute. There's been a well, lot just, of badass in this. Yeah, uh, but you gotta see the final moment between Prime and Soundwave. About him oh, being yeah. a man of peace, but being no fool. Now yeah. that was badass. Yeah, Here, uh, guys, again, did you again. also get what? that uh, that kind of sensation from the um, Transformers animated movie? Yes, I still have not watched it. Go on, go, ahead and go off about, tri about the movie. I'm just okay. Uh, uh, if you don't know, Optimus dies so on dope. the movie. Is one of the moments uh, that everybody hated about that movie that they they kill Optimus Prime. Uh, it's, it's it's like the most famous movie death yes. of yeah. all time. It's Absolutely. funny. Yeah. In this, uh, you have that moment when Optimus is lying down and everybody is around him, and it felt exactly like that scene. <laughs> so I was convinced he was going mm -hmm. to die. So yeah. the thing with this book is going into it, everything had been building up, and they were explicitly telling us someone is not surviving this book. And knowing that, reading this book, I it's Cliff the, jumping. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, they they keep doing these little like buildups where it seems like they're about to kill someone, and then we move to another section of the battle because all of this is just one it's big battle jumping. going on. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting constant blue balls through the through the comic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it's just Cliff Jumper. We already know. Oh really? Yeah, the thing is, him. the thing is though, like they've managed to make Cliff Jumper like in a way kind of stand out on his own here because mm, yeah, he's a character true. that's always that's always just been yeah. That's why he's know, gonna red, die, man. You know he's, this. He, he's a character that's always just been Red Bumblebee, and here he is now a chance to be a standout. And yeah, for I someone like, like Nick, Jumper's arc in this, I did. That's exactly it. There, yeah, I'm he's still Red Bumblebee. I mean, uh, Tiny Bot, I, friend with human. Kind of still good red bumble. Not gonna object, but I still enjoyed his character. Yeah, but oh, my, my point is, it, this book is a chance yeah. for, for newcomers to come in, like attached to a character life, like Cliff Jumper, where he could be your favorite. You know the song, dude. Come on, that is awesome. You I know, know right? the song. As ah. <laughs> soon as I saw that, at I some point, I. Yeah, you know, at some point, I was I was singing. You got the touch. Yeah, exactly. Is it weird? That's it. Oh, no. It's the dumb by intent. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. Just as you read, I mean, Wait, it's just it's I, just the I, magic I, of a man. You just can't contain yourself. Okay, yeah, here's a weird question. <laughs> uh, I know Sparky was a white guy, but didn't you feel like he was a black man? Because his touch brings <laughs> huh? you life. Not okay, you no. haven't seen that meme pro, uh, for the Spider-Man 2 uh, <laughs> game. Uh, there's a guy that made a video uh, where he sings over the scene of Miles Morales uh, reviving Peter Parker on the Spider-Man 2 game. But yeah. he sings about the touch of a black man. The that touch of life. a black man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I got that guy. <laughs> That is me. It's me. I, God, I, so, so, I swear, Miles Morales has got some of the funniest it's, shit ever. Just being the black it's guy. Sparky had, it's Sparky had the touch of a black man. He literally <laughs> Optimus. By the way, a bit. Uh, he gets into the uh, the old Spark. So a bit on the nose, but I love that this guy is called the Sparky, and he fuses with the old Spark. Yeah. So. I says, I says, yeah, I guess we are kind of we are getting into it, and spoilers oh, are sorry, flying. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can't really blame us; it's just too good to not spoil. Yeah, true. You know, there's 
there's there's a lot of great little moments in this book like the action it's so dynamic it's that same fluid like motion yeah. of action to it yeah where you have devastator just grabbing optimus by the leg and he's like say. getting ready to smash him down <laughs> what he does I'm like what he does <laughs> with optimus to star screen hey who, who just, when reading I'm, whose voice comes out when you hear devastator because i've been kind of listening to him with a form of uh either Randy Savage or uh, you remember Kane from WWE? Yeah, <laughs> one of those two. See, with me because you know I'm old enough to remember like all the cartoons and all that kind of stuff. That's how I read it in my head as I'm reading the book. Yep, all the yeah, time, I just can't, every time, yeah, completely right. Can't. Because because it just to me reading it that way it just makes it more animated. Really yeah, but sometimes because, you just need that specific voice. Just feels right. Well, yeah, moment. no, no, and I totally one hundred percent get you. But when, when, because the the action in this book, you know, you feel, you feel every every hit, every punch, like um, when Devastator is literally grinding Optimus against the wall of the Ark, right, and scraping him right across it, like you're literally feeling that right and and um like with me especially i can't read it any other way but like i read it with the with those specific voices in my head from the cartoon reading this and it just makes it like 10 times more fun for me at least so uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm i'm there with the same boat with you i've gone back i've gone through the the g1 series all the time and and that's that's where i keep going for the voices yeah. Uh, so yeah. when I'm when I'm hearing Devastator, I'm just hearing this like Devastator, mm-hmm. just like this deep booming voice. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I'm reading Cliff Jumper the same way. I'm reading, obviously Optimus the same way. I'm reading, you know, RC that way. Jazz, you know, like everybody, you know, and 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 Ratchet as well. I mean, oh my god, like this, this is literally like you definitely get the feel of a slaughter fest happening right now especially with devastator right yeah i mean and so you're going into this and it's like or at the very least for me anyway i'm like there's no optimist coming out of this alive no matter what we yeah. we, we we're not just immediately kill him off right off the bat so so you get to that panel where where devastator grabs ratchet he's got him like by the whole right. leg in his yeah i'm like oh no we're about to lose ratchet yeah exactly oh no and then, and then he's crawling for dear life. <laughs> ah! I'm crawling as fast as I can. <laughs> like, I swear to God, this comic would be fucked up in the minds, the hands oh, of a kid. Man. It's 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 good. Like like I said before, like last time I was on here, like I didn't think at first that that the art worked, but it works, right? It totally works. Like, you know, originally with Dreamwave and uh, and IDW, you know, when Don uh, Figura did the artwork for that. And I love his artwork because I know him all the way from like TFW 2005 from that website, right? When he was starting to do the fan art and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and I've sort of kind of like kept a little bit of touch with him and stuff like that. But, but, uh, and, and I love the way he draws Transformers. Don't get me wrong because it's very, you know, they look like, robots right but with this it's a little bit more animated because um the the um it's just it's just the way the action is drawn it makes it even that much more fun to read and uh and i'm liking this i'm liking this it's with the with the motion is remind me of of a lot of like modern anime yes with just the way they'll do the action shots yeah Mm -hmm. and the grit I the love pacing. that Dan really, yeah. The pacing it feels well balanced. No issue feels too short or feels too rushed, even though you are left with wanting more. It feels like this story is really like I feel like he I I feel like there's a part of him that had elements of the story sitting for a long time. Yes. And I'm not uh, saying it in a sense where it's outdated, but I'm saying the sense that he's always had a story of okay yes. i have an idea i have a pitch if i ever get to do a transformer story this is what it's going to be i yeah. think he had this i think he had a, a lot of the layout the groundwork set up the blueprints if you will 
for a long time because the story seems so well organized, mm-hmm. thought out, pacing wise, action wise. And once again, like it's still a trans, it feels like it's a Transformers book, but mm-hmm. it's got all the tropes because I'm, I come from the perspective of knowing Dan Johnson, like not, not just as rear, but actually He's- knowing him because of talking to him, running mm-hmm. into him at metal shows. I know his indie work really well. Extremity, Murder yeah. Falcon, Dual Powerbomb. I remember when he did um, Beta Ray Bill for Marvel. He did the oh, Jurassic yes. League as a writer strictly for DC. He did Wonder Woman Debtor for their Black Label. And now he's doing Transformers. And I feel like as someone who's now been reading these books for years from him, I feel like this is easily one of his crowning achievements, if not his crowning achievements. Nick, this, I, I, and I'd say that as once again, I've been there. I was there when no one knew who the guy was. Mm. And now it's like, holy crap. And he's been doing home run after home run. And now this might be his his opus. And that's saying a lot. He didn't come in, make the splash right away. And then all of a sudden, everything else out there, his best days are right. No, this guy was making great stuff in the beginning. Continue to fine tune his craft, stay good, and then boom, Transformers comes along. Not only did he deliver us a great arc with this, but it's the rare thing that he's doing where he's going to do more for it because everything else he's done, he's never done more for. Mm. We're so, lucky. Uh, I know more so, issues for this. Uh, Nick, I know you have read a bit of One Piece, but this pacing reminds me of current One Piece because on okay. One Piece, everything is a whole fight. Okay. And you are just jumping, but there's a theme uh, between the panels. You change from this fight to this fight, and uh, you get yep. just bits of every single fight. But there's a theme uh, that is interconnected between every skip uh, to another fight. So you get a sensation that everything is in a direct flow. This uh-huh. is what I'm uh-huh. seeing here. It's exa- uh-huh. exactly the same. Is Optimus uh, with his regret. Uh-huh. Then you go to the next scene, and what you see somebody that is not willing to pull the trigger. So you get that connection between panels that flows really, really well, and the fight flows in the same way. Uh Uh, Okay, we got a few things we're going to acknowledge. I want to acknowledge first uh, Mars Monkey Max, the Nightwing, the Angry Gamer, Tyranus Cygnus, (laughs) Anus, how are you guys all doing? Uh, And Duras for five bucks says, I felt the author's hand with Cliff Jungfer. He put the eight ball in close hand. Other than that, I'm enjoying the, I'm enjoying the book, Five Dollars for Extra Pony. Uh, extra pepperoni. Thank you, dearest. I I don't personally see it that way, but you and I have had conflicting views before, and this won't be the last. I respect your honesty in that. I personally love that part of the book. For me, that felt like a very Transformers one, and that's because maybe it's because I've, I've grown to love Optimus Prime over the last six months and they could be a little bit of that playing into my opinion but hey you're you're welcome to have that stay here and you're still welcome here to have that say i don't want you to change your mind only because others say so so i appreciate your honesty and your your um straightforwardness sir and cheers to you dearest and thank you for the five bucks uh, guys our friend here oh before we say it, rsq double one cheers rsq double one <laughs> what's up man cheers um Fedrir has to go, so we're going to let him plug his plug on the way out. Gayness and all. Yeah. All right. All right, you beautiful bastards already know everything he needs to know about me. I'm I'm <laughs> not know? doing shit. I don't really have plans for crap. And I, I, God, I'm just, I'm so freaking lazy. I don't even know if I can finish this one here. But the point is, just follow me on Twitter or, or YouTube or some crap. I don't know, man. I don't know. Just do what the hell you want to do. All right? Just do what the hell you want to do. Nick, stay fun. This was fun. I hope to make it next week. Probably not. Don't know. I really do hope. I, I I'm a nerd. Next Cut Friday. your damn beard. You look like a freaking this. hippie. Iron caster. <laughs> Same thing, nope. but just a little less in the hair. Follow. Follow. <laughs> Go jump the border once and for all, damn it! And come with me. do, man. May do. <laughs> He's the only. Give me the goddamn lucky charms, or I'm going for your freaking head. <laughs> all right, here you can just take it out of the bowl right now. Okay, uh, 
Fenrir, have All a right, good night, cool. sir. Thank you for being here. Um, guys, we're gonna, we're gonna do another cheers, and this one's a little bit more. I want to say right, something, so but we we have we have a guy in our chat who's a channel member, a regular listener, and he apparently I guess he was fired from his job the Nightwing, and I'm sorry oh, to hear, sir. Um, oh man, everything sorry, will man. turn around, man. I've I've been there. It's been a long time since I've been there, but I've been, been there. there too, but just stay, stay, stay vigilant stay urgent stay awesome you'll you'll turn it around man it's not impossible you will you will turn this around and this one guys we got 22 of you in the chat thank you for being here 23 that i was wrong guys let's 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 raise one up for the nightwing we we are all mm -hmm. pulling for you sir thank you yeah, dude. cheers good night fenrir thank you all right Matt, you beautiful know. bastard. Stay safe. Do you, uh, so anyways, well, a little bit more about, about Transformers before you transition on oh, over uh, to Nightwing. I was yeah. going just to say this uh, to Nightwing. Uh, I have been unemployed a lot of times. Here's the key. Instead of uh, staying in the mindset that you don't have uh, a job, just think uh -huh. about this. You have time. And with time, you can do a lot of shit. You can do a lot of small works that will give you money. You can learn uh, new skills to do anything. And also, it's a good time just to reassess everything and think how you are tackling the next objective. Because mm -hmm. what they give you is time. You have time, mm -hmm. use that time wisely, and you will come around. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. All right. So, gentlemen, um, a little bit more about Transformers. And, and dude, hey, I'm glad we can keep you coming. That's, that's what we're here for, man. We try to make sure Friday night is fun. There's already enough we deal with in the world. Even when we don't want to, we try to stay out of it. So this is a place where we could go to get away from it all. And because we're not being here next Friday tonight, we're going the full three hours. So enjoy your enjoy your stay here, sir. All right. So what I like with uh, the, the Transformers, I feel I always said it, even though there's some skepticism. And to be fair, the skepticism was warranted. But because of my experience, I knew the skepticism was going to be fine as far as the second arc. Because Dan is not drawing it, but he's just writing it with Jorge Corona. Right. And Jorge Corona normally does stuff with Scotty Young. He did uh, Middle West, uh, which is this really powerful uh fantasy drama that i really enjoyed and they did the me you love in the dark was just like more of like a thriller horror both stories with scotty young that i really enjoyed so i'm like okay he's gonna be just fine with this guy on board i'm really looking forward to jorge corona on the book it's gonna be it's gonna be sad when dan over all the parts i don't think he's gonna be on after that but we're gonna enjoy these I think, sorry, we're. I think we're gonna enjoy these next six issues. I think we're gonna be in good hands with Jorge, as well as Dan, because Dan will still keep that human feel to these robots, and yeah. I feel like that's very mm -hmm. important. Oh, one hundred percent, totally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and as long as the action stays consistent, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think we have really much to worry about. You know, with this with this book whatsoever. Um, you know, some of, well, I know there hasn't been like a lot of humor lately, but yeah, as long as they keep the, uh, the human aspect to, to these characters, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Even though they're from like another world and whatnot, but you know, mm -hmm. on top of that, they're still learning. Um, you know, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm liking where this book is going. It's been, it's been great. These six issues just phenomenal you know and yeah it's like it's like when you're watching a 22 minute episode and it's not enough mm -hmm. you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like that part one in a three-part series and it's like mm -hmm. oh my god that went too quick right this is what like reading this issue is like it's like oh my god this is over already no i want more sir you have to no. give me more right no this, this was a this was a book i almost i almost ripped out of my my little brown 
my little brown bag and start reading like in the in in the car outside that's exactly of what i did that's yeah. exactly what i did for this issue and i've not done that in a long time yeah transformers number six did that for me mm-hmm. it was awesome it was a great moment and it's something it's just like i don't know how many more of those i'm gonna have as far as i guess you could say mainstream comics but i'm so glad i can at least say i may have had it at least one more time like, I wasn't even this excited for an IDW Transformers comic mm-hmm. book. And that's mm-hmm. got to say something, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I honestly, with as long as IDW has had it for like 10 years, um, mm-hmm. you know, near, I don't know, probably maybe near the middle of it or something like that, I just was starting to kind of lose interest in it, which was pretty bad considering how much I've always enjoyed this property whatsoever. But... Now, you know, I I am totally excited for this. I, I, you know, I need this coming up more than just once a month. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. I'm serious. Yeah. No, I, I believe you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, before we answer this question from the Gilded King, um, I got to acknowledge our... Way! Woo! Oh, from B. Marte. Hi, Nick. Nice. Simple as that. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, B. Marte. For pizza, had to get back to work. I'll watch replay later. Thank, dude, thank, thank you for 20. I will get pizza, but dude, thank you for catching replay. Uh, we're going to make sure we don't let you down with this replay. There will be a little bit of drunken debauchery sprinkle in between, but you're going to get a good show, and that's a promise. We're going to deliver, sir. Thank you for the 20 bucks. That's once again, that's insanely generous for you. But I just appreciate you listening. Anything else is just gravy at that. And I love gravy too. Trust me. Mashed potatoes and gravy and I are a constant honeymoon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> appreciate the 20 bucks. Shout out to you. All right. Uh, Vince asked, what do you guys think of what the consequences are going to be with Sparkplug doing what he did? Good question. <sighs> I'll let our Transformers mm. experts answer that before I move on to the next question. So the thing is, like, Spike is basically a young a young man who's going to be an adult. This is going to be something that's going to bring him into this fight. I think a lot for a lot more because his his father was a soldier. So in so there's part of him that should have always kind of known that there was a chance that his father fighting could have led to his death. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. It, well, it really could go a couple of ways because there's a potential that he could kind of resent Optimus for like his dad's death is one way they could go. But I think it. I think we're going to see him him drawn in as OK, this fight has come to Earth and it's now cost me someone I loved much like Carly lost her father over this. They have bo- both these characters have have lost you know loved ones over these Cybertronians now is a chance to really bring this forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like I you know I really like that in between this being a robot first story, there have been likable humans and these humans have had moments of um, trials and tribulations. Like there's not a bad dad. There's not a Mary Sue where she's invincible. You see her suffer. Yeah, I thought at one point she was actually going to die when she was caught in the grip of a certain transformer. Yeah, you, that was my like, I was just like, oh mm-hmm. shit. She but before died. that, you can feel her bloodlust. And oh, that's, yeah. yeah, she was. It was a human feeling. She wants yeah. him dead. She wants him you dead. killed my father. What's a father? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, 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 that got me really hard because, yeah, for, uh, for a Transformer, all those relationships are meaningless because yes. they don't have them. Mm-hmm. So that moment feels even more painful because of that is that sensation of this guy doesn't even care that you lost a loved one yeah no it's yeah. it's awesome to see the humans are really well told and these characters have a lot of really meaningful moments but man i'll just say the moment we want to say it in cut full context but the moment for sparky to do what he mm-hmm. did Wow, yeah. even on reread, I still felt that. Yeah, I still felt that even on reread. Yeah, wow, 
and I didn't even wow. It felt like I was watching like a very important moment in a movie for the first time. And so, I have yes, several. I remember when them. I saw that moment in the movie. Mm -hmm. There's too many questions because one, uh, do humans have any energon component? Do they can generate energon? Is biological matter transformable into energon? Because uh, I don't know how that happened. He's basically like, hey, I live here now. Guess I'm a battery. And I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, wait, uh, I have several questions about this. Uh, is electrolysis possible there? Uh, or no, no, is... no. You're, you're seeing it wrong. Because spark plug in this case would be the first power master in this series. Huh. Yeah. If you want to look at it that way. So interesting. <laughs> so, so, so we we really need to call it Ginrai. Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, because that body originally was intended for Prime. Yep. So, you know. Also, uh, there's another thing that I'm wondering because uh, if he is capable of doing that, where is his consciousness? Uh, is he really dead, or can you transfer that consciousness into a body mm. made of metal? Exactly. We'll have to wait and see. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting that they give you so many questions with one of the best moments on the whole book. Well, that's the thing. See, because because the Matrix is, you know, depending on, you know, I suppose the original continuity, you know, if you look at it from the cartoon kind of angle, it's the it's the essentially, you know, the whole fountain of wisdom of all the ancient Autobots that came before, right? So it's basically a whole big giant receptacle of knowledge, right? And so now that spark plug is for all intents and purposes, you know, one with the matrix. Um, you know, not that I wanted him to go because I'm like, oh boy, yeah, okay, this is this is quite the twist. And this is never this is something that's never been done before whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know the consequences of, you know, what's no. going to happen later on with this, right? It, is, it, is, it, it, is it able to be done? Well, okay, you're going to have to now explain this, right? Is there a way that um, somehow if Prime releases the energy of the Matrix at some point in time, will Spark Plug be able to come back? Will he be released from the Matrix? You know, don't know. Right, have absolutely no idea. How is this going to affect Spike once he recovers out of the hospital? Well, you know, maybe, hopefully, Carly will be able to explain. You know, probably, even though she wasn't directly there. But you know, is is it gonna is it gonna turn him off from all of this? Is it gonna actually make him stronger because mm -hmm. of you know what they did to uh, to you know what they were gonna do to his dad, basically, right? I mean, you know, Devastator's like not only going to kill the Autobots, but, you know, Spark Plug as well, right? So there's a whole bunch of answered questions. And and I want to know how they're going to how they're going to write this, right? Mm -hmm. So it it I mean, it brings to mind the, you know, the one of the one of the many, many catchphrases we've got over this franchise till all are one. Yeah, exactly. So is Spark Plug one? Being human, that's going to be interesting. For a time, the Spark was considered this kind of soul for the Autobots. So if you think about it, well, his soul now is part of the Spark. Mm -hmm. But what about the organic components? Exactly. Well, I mean, technically speaking, I mean, we're all made out of atoms. And what are atoms, essentially, just, you know, it's energy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you really get down to the nuts and bolts... Mm, more than likely. Hmm. So, you know, um, uh, yeah, plus on top of that, you know, are they going to keep with the whole spark idea that was introduced in Beast Wars back in 1994? Or are they going to go with like the whole, uh, like in the cartoon, they have a laser core, right? Which was kind of like, you know, pre spark, I suppose you could say, idea, mm -hmm. you know? So, a lot of questions. And and I want to know now. Yeah. Oh, 
I can't wait till we have the second arc to talk about with issue seven, and we will we'll get you back on for that. We will we'll do that. Yeah, sure. If we can get Diesel cool. back on, we'll get Diesel back on. Let's answer Vince's question before we mm. um maybe wrap up this uh, awesome segment that we've had on Transformers number six. So who wants to answer this for our, our guy Vince? Because I love Iron Castro. Uh, I I. I think I think I mean I think it's possible, but I mean in theory, what we could see is I don't know. I'm trying to think of ideas they could do. Like uh, if we wind up with some, with an, a Cybertronian who's like brain dead, they could potentially release him into that body and bring them back. Because mm-hmm. mm. I mean, because it's like there are certain characters we just we haven't been seeing the last couple of issues, like. Wheeljack is around, but I think he's off at like the dam doing who knows what. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, you saw the state of Megatron throughout this. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. who's to say we won't find other characters in some similar messed up situations? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. If they if if they bring him back, I don't think it'll be a headmaster, power master, or pretend definitely not a pretender. Mm-hmm. Um because first of all, a, a pretender is a robot that is hiding in disguise, in a disguise, mm-hmm. and headmaster, powermaster. It depends on what continuity you go by. If you go by the Japanese continuity, they were originally robots anyway, right? Mm-hmm. And powermasters were well, I mean, they were human that you know, with a you know, more like how North America kind of did it, you know, like a humanoid and in a suit essentially that was the robot um i don't know i think they're just basically you know at one point you know he'll just open the matrix and uh pop back but would that hmm. but would that be good for the story though i don't know yeah that's a that's that's the thing i don't i'm gonna because... say probably not but then again I don't know how they're going to write it in the future, you know. Because I think that's the bigger. I think that's the bigger issue, though. Is are we is with this being a brand new continuity? We haven't been doing too much in terms of kind of playing, you know, playing a you know revolving door with death. Yeah, because it'll be it'll end up being a sacrifice that's totally in vain, right? Exactly, and I think I think for our narrative purpose, like the death of the father like this, that has some greater Wait. impact. I think yeah. I, it, it's more motivating to leave him that way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember yeah. what I was saying about the J.I. Uh, universe? Yeah. Now he's a prime candidate to actually be the uh, a spark that ignites the J.I. Literally. Joe. Literally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, uh, now he has that weight of his father de- uh, his father's death. Yep. Mm-hmm. So maybe he will become more than he is now, just a kid. No, he has a goal. He has uh, the sensation of my father give his life for something greater. So maybe he will try to do the same. Maybe he will try to become something else. And that uh, starts the Joes. Mm-hmm. Well, we we could be we could see something along the lines of like what we had with Spike in the IDW continuity out of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where yeah. he or he winds up, he winds up uh, in going into the military, wanting to fight against them, or he winds up recruited by, say, a top secret paramilitary organization uh-huh. because of his knowledge with the Transformers. Yeah, mm-hmm. or they could be doing it from a different kind of angle because there was rumored to be, I think, at like a botcon like ages ago, where between the end of season two and the movie, right? Because obviously spark plug isn't there. Right. And it's, uh, it's, um, you know, spike and obviously, you know, we got married to Carly had a son, blah, 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 Daniel. And there was a story somewhere and I got to remember where, and I got to find this that explained what happened to spark plug, right? That he died. Huh? Yes. And I have to find that somewhere because if these writers know about that story, mm-hmm. then it wouldn't surprise me if somehow in a loose kind of way, you know, in this new 
in this new Energon verse, they kind of adapted it that way. Mm -hmm. So oh, I got to look that up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to answer RSQ001's question real quick. He said, are there more comments to cars and girls at the Rocketeer? No, I can't say it measures the same level of toxicity, but there is a little bit of that in Duke. There is a little mm. bit of that in Duke currently going on. That's three issues, and it's a five-issue miniseries. The issues are out. Uh, issue four is out in two weeks. There are some sweet vehicles you see in issue two, and there's some great toxic male moments, especially in issue two. I'll just leave it at that, RSQ. Thank <laughs> you for your comment. Sorry I didn't get to it as soon as I wanted to, but when you have a good vibe, a good conversation, you want to keep it going, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. But seriously, that that will trust me when I say that will answer your question, sir. So well, before go ahead. before go we ahead. go changing this, moving yeah. off the transformer subject, I want to ask you, Nick, because yeah. you're the new guy to this, and I val and of everyone here, I kind of that's the opinion I want to know the most. For you, who's your favorite character right now? Who are you gravitating towards? Because Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I because I've I've said I mean I've talked with you in private and I've said I think you're gonna love jazz. I do like jazz. Yeah. What is the Porsche? Optimus Prime has <laughs> such an easy <laughs> relatable arc and his yeah. humanity, his humility. Even though he's a robot, ironically, there's something to that. Mm -hmm. it's incredible. I also love the capabilities and damage of the Devastator as well. What yeah. a really powerful character. Oh my damn, this this guy here is a son of a bitch. He's just a think son about it when they introduce other combiners and then oh Omega Supreme gosh. as well. I can't wait. I know. I really now that we have a full arc in, I really, really love this arc. Um, this is easily in the upper, if not top two, top one of everything I've read from Dan Johnson. I fell in love with this arc, and I now am a believer in the Transformers. Uh, I think my kids and I are actually going to watch the Bumblebee movie in a few days. So nice. we're going to, I'm going to do the oh. 80s anime movie and Bumblebee. Those are going to be the two movies. Okay. Oh. Ooh, Nick, Nick I you have to, to go. I'm going to have to go send ahead. You, you, you know right, exactly what I'm going to say. I'm going to have to send you two something. Okay. That's okay. about <laughs> the original, the original movie, but you're going to like this kind of version probably better. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm really, yeah, Dev, I, and I want a Devastator toy. I want a Devastator toy. It's, that's a toy I want. That's a toy I want. He's got so, oh, he's got one of them right there. Oh, oh, oh. Extra fun. That, dude. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's oh, real nice. nice. Yep. Yeah, I I sure. love this story. I, I really I did love the story. I did a video this past Sunday, you know, because I work with extra spots. And for what Keith had <laughs> told me, and uh, for what Keith had told me, there's supposed to be three more Constructicons coming out this year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And this is this is the tune version. You can also get a toy version, like the original toy version, which has mm -hmm. Blackhead and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Putin's yeah. cat asked Legos. Um, I will be getting the Bumblebee Lego set when that comes out. I'll be having Castor on for that stream. And that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun, and I can't wait to mm. own some uh Transformers Lego set. That Bumblebee does look awesome. Yeah, dude, I I can't wait for issue seven. And let's just pretend that somehow seven through twelve is what's it, and then Duke Cobra Commander Vo Void Rivals looks beyond going. But let's just say the R three are what's good. And it, it, in case of the possibility that what follows after that is not as good, it's just going to only inspire me to go backwards. And that mm -hmm. is completely okay. Because I'm still going to look at, then I'll just be more motivated to check out those issues, more motivated to buy them or toys on top of it from both. And I'll still have Void Rivals on top of it and a real American hero. So, mm. yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for the future. Oh my god, Mass Gray, what's up, buddy? I cannot wait since I, I see your avatar. Well, acknowledge this really quickly because obviously I'll be in Houston when I land in Houston. We're gonna go get a rental car, and after we get a rental car, we're gonna go to a comic shop in Houston because Nick doesn't go out of the out of the state and not just go to a comic shop. I have to at least visit one or two. And I know there's two comics I want to read from next week. Uh, one of them being Sam and Twitch Case Files, number one, yeah. which is from um, this is that detective comic that's supposed to be an ongoing in the Spawn universe. And Concerned Mass Grave has a Spawn universe um, avatar. I feel like I should acknowledge that. I'm looking forward to reading that issue. The fact that we have a detective story coming out it's about time. I think there's a market out there really waiting for a detective comic. It's about damn time. It's mm. about fucking 10, 12, 15 years time. We're finally getting that. And if Dean Kane, all American lawman comes in before I go to Houston, I will read that, read it again, review it for the channel before I go that I'm hoping it comes because I want to do it before I go. I would hate for me. I'll still review it just for the channel, but I would love to be able to get that out of the way before I go. But, um, and of course, Cobra commander number three hits next week as well. Nice. And after the introduction of buzzer and the ripper from the dreadnoughts, speaking yeah. of, um, I got ripper here and I have, buzzer officially as well as my second figure in the packaging so as we talk about yaira i'll get that out of the box and also show off some goods as well and i you know, don't know nick, if group baker is doing his criminal series i don't know but go on it, it sounds like you it sounds like you're just going to collect the the dreadnoughts like that's going to be your joe team okay so you got to get zartan zartan zarana yeah uh there's a couple of others Dreadnoughts, but I just can't remember their names. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I found the knight. It's like that it's like that's just like that's the Nick team right there. <laughs> it might it might be a uh, comic relief. You gotta get going, buddy. Get going. Yep. Okay, man. Hey, thank you for being here, sir. No, um, all hold good. On. Hold on a few seconds. I dropped the gun. <laughs> dropped the gun. Damn it. <laughs> dropped the gun. I know, right? Here I am saying that shit. Where's Monkey Max? You're in Houston, dude. Um, are you on my Gilded or my uh, Twitter? Because right, I would like to know if you are. Because if you are or aren't, I'd like to find out. Because I'm, I was thinking about a pizzeria I was looking at in Houston to go to, and it'd be nice if I could get a few people going there to, well, eat some pie. You know? Oh, I found eat it. Eat some pizza. Eat some yeah. pie. I looked at all of Dave Portnoy's videos of the best pizzerias in Houston. He did like nine or ten videos. Only two or three of them he spoke really highly of. But Ooh. one really stuck out. It's called Gypsy Poet. Um, I don't know if you're on any socials, Mars. But all, all I could say is you should get on Gilded. We could keep in touch with there in case I do do like, I don't know, like a Gypsy Poet meetup. And a bull rush. He lives in Houston as well. Stone Loki, 24-7 Fusion Media. I'm just saying, guys. Good guys. Getting the boys together for pizza would be nice. And anyway, uh, Comic Relief, we'll let you plug your plugs on the way out because, yeah, we're probably going to go about another hour. And then we're going to call it a night. Yeah, so, totally, dude. Thank you for being here, sir. Oh, oh. He's had it. Uh, okay, and he knows Loki now. Okay, I think we ah, have destiny. All better. right, Comic Relief. Thank you for being here, sir. I can't wait to have you back on again and again. I love having you on. It's it's a gift that keeps on giving. I sir. Try. Oh, and we'll try more. <laughs> and what's up, student of God? Welcome to the show, but we're about to talk about Yaira. Perfect timing. Uh Comic Relief Crusader, do you have anything coming out that we should know about? 
Yeah, well, um, some of you guys might know me. If you don't, well, you soon will, because on Tuesdays, we uh, we definitely have a live show with a bunch of idiots like me on top of that, and we just have a bunch of fun on uh, Titillating Tuesdays, which is on at 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and we talk about everything that's going on in comics and movies and TV and games uh-huh. and all that kind of fun stuff. And then we do the same thing on a Friday for Frantic Friday. So we try to end off the week with a laugh. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll end up talking about, like, at first, some stupid news that's going on in the world. Because these people definitely need to be shamed above all else. And on top of that, you know, we'll just take a brief commercial break in between. Mm -hmm. And then, especially on a Friday, we'll end off things with a funny cartoon. So you can just go and ease your way in gently into Mm -hmm. the weekend before you end up watching shows like this one. And only this one. (laughs) (laughs) hey comic thanks for being here dude i love hanging out with you man i'm so happy for you with your success on your channel you're gonna get even bigger you're gonna get even huger huger totally huge huge. totally huge 50 51 away from a thousand now oh man i am that close that close. Oh and I'm man! So close. I'm getting the hours, the four thousand hours. I am like so freaking close. So if you guys can, um, yeah, subscribe. Check me out. I guarantee you guys will have a laugh. Oh, so uh, I can back that statement. Comic, have a good weekend, sir. It. We'll have you back on next man. month. That's a pr- yeah. it's, it's already said and done. You're gonna be back here next month. That's it. There we go. Okay. We're good then. So See? Yeah, not a problem. Be good. All right, man. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. And I want to acknowledge the great uh, Legion of Memer celebrity in the chat, my guy, core member. One, two, three. I don't, I don't think you've been around here before. Or maybe having you or just lurking. But, dude, shout out to core member. Thanks for dropping in, dude. I'm so happy to see you here. You're one of my absolute fucking favorite memers of the bunch. So, thanks for being here. Hopefully, you're having a good, solid Friday night. And, of course, once again, shout out to Student of God. Guys, let's talk about Yaira. I mean, it's a campaign that is hugely strong. Uh, it hit a million at right around 24 hours. Uh, dude, hey, this is a good place to be here. I promise that. I promise. Hit 24 hours, and on top of it, it's it's a great-looking campaign. I, myself, I ordered cover A. And I also order the Dokumon second deck set of cards because I can't wait for this guy. I know PTP Patrick Thomas Barnell did the cards for the second wave because I know Will Conrad did the first wave. So PTB did the second wave, and I can't wait. And I was retarded. I see. I confess. I'm like, why is it this order? Why won't it let me add the Ripazine? I'm trying to buy the Ripazine. Don't you want my buddy? And now all of a sudden, I found out, oh, if you're already a Riververse member, it automatically adds to it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, I guess that's a good thing, that that is the freebie. <laughs> but that's a good that's a good problem to have, where the, the thing that I want happened yeah. to be the freebie. That's a good thing. <laughs> right. I was like, oh, okay. Because it kept denying me. I tried three times, like, Wow. Why are you denying me of this purchase? But then also mm-hmm. I looked into it because I didn't know. I didn't look into it at the time. At the time, I just like, look, 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 bye, 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 be done. I didn't look at the information about it because I just wanted to get my purchases in and out and done. But the fact that the Ripazine looked really cool, and I want to highlight that because that Ripazine, what I li- really liked about the Ripazine is it reminds me of when I used to get Spider-Man magazine. Spider-Man, Spider-Man magazine. I would go to my local Walgreens and get Spider-Man magazine. Yeah, I should have Vulcan. That's on me. That I I totally take ownership on that. When I was looking at the the zine, something struck me about the zine, and I wanna I wanna highlight that. So let's go look at the Ripper first website, shall we, gentlemen? So, yes. 
I like that we got this character here named the Salvage, P.I. A.K.A. Private Investigator, thirteen page story by Eric July and Brian. Uh, sorry, Bart Sears. I am so happy we're gonna get a full on traditional detective character in this universe. That makes me happy as fuck. I am so excited. I'm, I'm like, I'm looking forward to this story just as much as Yair. I really straight up on 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 equal level. The salvage. I'm like, I love his suit too. It looks of that era. It looks classy as fuck, and the hat too, dude. Come on, it's not a. It's not. It's a... <laughs> Come again? Come again? Dryer's done. <laughs> it's a good costume buzzer. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I like the I like the little touches they're putting in there, like the little gossip section with uh, Lillian uh, Ranashi. Yeah, the, cool too. the Blood Ruth horoscope. Yeah, I like that. I do too. And it's fitting. Those things all fit their character precisely. As someone who's read all these books, all those things fit their characters. All of them. It's really cool. I'm really excited about those Ripazine. I really am. I was like, damn, this is this is fun. And it reminds me of when I used to get Spider-Man magazine. I'm I'm really hyped up for Ripazine. I cannot wait for this thing. It's gonna be a good time. Michael Copper, gentlemen's tips. <laughs> gentlemen's tips. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I've looked into Bart Sears' art. Looks good. I can't wait for this. And we but get also, an original story on that. What, 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 what but also there's the extra little edition of the first four, the previews of the first four books. So for anyone yeah. who they didn't check out any of those, here's, here's your chance to check that out. And then, hey, still available. You can go ahead and order it if, if the preview looks good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's awesome to see that we have that going on. And good to see Vulcan lives as, yeah, he sounds like he's got the similar enthusiasm. What's up? Uh, Jim Bone's still here. Thank you for making your presence known that you're still around. Yeah. This is cool. You get previews. You get these little like sections on characters that it almost makes you feel like you're talking about real life, like almost like celebrities, except you're talking about characters in a comic universe. And they get some original story on top of it all. I this zine idea is one of the most fascinating ideas to me ever, and I'm so sold on this idea. I can't wait. And as soon as God, I saw your comment. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. Oh, we're Ooh, gonna get that dope. Yeah, I saw that. That was legitimate too, by the way. But I really am so happy to see something like this come out, and I hope more come out of it. I really do. I want more. I want to be in a world where stuff like that comes out. And guys, before we're not gonna shut this uh, campaign stuff down yet, but dude. I, I just got it today, so fuck it. Let's take it out. Do what they love I, for variants. I do too. I'm, I'm, I, and also, I really enjoyed Joe Bennett's art on this thing. So it's like, it's like it was a seamless transition. Hey, transition. All right. Let's look at it even more so. Oh, look at that shot. Oh, damn. I know. Oh, yeah. This I feel I'm like be going through a lot throughout the weekend. Oh, I feel like God. Raquel would be telling you to pick up some. Oh, gloves. Some gloves. Oh, she yeah. would be. She's probably <laughs> gonna be cursing my name come morning, and I'm gonna get DMs from her on Twitter. Dick. Like I know, I know. Yeah, a little forward here from Fabio Jantz. I know it's supposed to be his um his inker for horsemen, which I actually 
and I'm not saying it's just because it's Chuck Dixon or Joel Ben or Eric John, but I'm actually looking forward to Horseman. Because people said they saw Batman in it. I'm like, no, I see I see fucking Night Thrasher in that. I see Night Thrasher in that. But dude, oh come on. Oh dude. Oh. And there's got all these little notes here too. I know he's got less than 500 left because he did uh, two. He did 2,000 with this specific foil cover. And he's got less than 500 left because he said the ones that would be printed after that would be mass print, and it would be more of like a traditional cover. But dude, dude, oh, that's nice. Look at that. I, I can't wait to look at all the notes here. I cannot wait. This is this is gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna have a trip with this thing. Cause this looks fun as fuck. Oh hey, look. Collectible comics, guys. Go collect your comics. Yeah. This is already worth the read. This is already and this yeah, even this the back is shiny too. Look at that shine. Yeah, Raquel is definitely cursing my name, but guys. I can't wait to read this. I'm waiting for the ND Andrew comic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could see why you bought it, two Vulcan. I could understand why. No, it'll it'll be the only comic for like the all of Ripperverse that doesn't have any dialogue at all. Mm. <laughs> it just his mouth is taped up the entire time. He's a he's a mute <laughs> superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He also did say, in case you're someone who maybe let's just say you just backed the Ira campaign and you can't just maybe fork out money so soon, the traditional cover when it comes out after the 2000 run out will be a lot cheaper. So, oh, you see this that's time? a yeah. Anyways, let, let's go back to the Ripperverse website, okay? Because once again, I'm all about the zine. Um, let's let's look at some of those covers for you. I read number one. Maybe we'll even go over the trip. Oh, let's look at some interiors first. I really like well, what Deborah Carita is doing here. I really like this. Well, there's one little detail I think you kind of glossed over that we should also acknowledge. Acknowledge it. Well, we're here, man. We got 45 what, minutes. Let's do it. What's the price? Um, oh, on Yaira, uh, the covers may vary. I know I don't know the context behind them, and I would like some context there. But so this is where it's interesting. So we'll, we'll click there. So cover A is twenty nine. Uh, cover B is twenty nine. So we're talking one dollar more than Alpha Core. Now here's where it gets more. But cover D is twenty five. Now, and then cover C, drawn by Graham Nolan, which is a foil, a really good-looking foil, might I add, is Fetty. So same as Alpha Core with the foil. Okay, I, I do like that cover from Graham Nolan. I think that I personally think that it looks freaking badass. It looks like some oh, what Graham Nolan, seeing the way Graham draws things, this looks very much like what he does. See, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards B for myself. As that's, nice as that, that oh, foil that, cover that's is, that's Will Conrad. That's Will Conrad, who's gonna be the artist for Gooding. What I'm I a, like, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that kind of throwback of that throwback style cover where it's it's giving you dialogue on there. It's giving you like a little tease of what you can expect inside. Yeah, let's look. Let's there we go. Yeah, I I'm with you, Kess, on that because this was obviously what it was like for Isom too. I like the I like the corner logo. And then mm -hmm. he's got the, the code of ethics remind me of the comics code authority. And then you got the dialogue. I'm looking forward to putting you on ice, the cheesy one liner from the villain. Cause you know, villains love their monologues haunted by her past. So it kind of gives you like an idea that you're going to get a little bit of what's to come in the issue. I really like this cover from Will Cotton. It lets you know the first appearances, the chilling. Yeah. This is what a, like a late eighties, early nineties cover is. And I'm, I am a sucker for that. I really the, am. The only thing it's missing is first issue collectible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one was from uh, Mark Evans. And 
looks a little bit more. It looks like it looks like he painted this one. This doesn't look of the 3D nature. I mean, if it is, then I guess you know I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But this looks like this was painted or drawn, drawn. So that's what I'm guessing out of this cover. Because uh, yeah. I remember Mark Evans actually did paint the cover for Alpha Core, which I really respect. I think that's cool that he actually painted a cover. I don't know if he did again this time, but either way, I do like this cover as well. I, so I like the, the coloring on it. That really stands out to me. That's That is making cover D uh, very tempting. It is. It is a really good cover. And of course, you got Kanan White, who did a great cover here with cover A. And Kanan's a really killer cover artist. It's like, okay, this is the center character, Ice Powers, sitting back of her. And then you got someone with a gun, and there's some icicles. Like, damn, okay. So he's got some. Di so, well, as uh, Ripa said earlier on Midnight's Edge, she's a wild card character. And when him and Script Doctor were going out and shot the Script Doctor, great guy, really great guy. He's like, so is this like a, a sense, almost like a Punisher character mm -hmm. in that sense? That he's all, he's you know, Punisher's the wild card. Like when you have like a Daredevil story, Punisher's there to kind of throw a wrench in things. And Rip was like, I could see where he comes from. He's like, it, that's not exactly what occurred to me. But I could see why you thought that. And I, I, I see that. I could see where Script thought of that because she feels like that kind of character so i am i'm all about that i i, the, I think that's cool the only thing that's that I, i'm gonna be thinking about while reading this is all the all the terrible ice puns from mr freeze oh <laughs> are you talking about ice on two mars let me give me some clarification because if so i can i can reach out to andrew for you and try to solve that okay man let me know Okay, I do have Andrew's information. I also have Carol Lynn's information. Let me know. Maybe we can work something out. Or right, am I reading some them? Am I reading that? Oh, okay, so it's not for that. What's up, Conan? Conan the Barbarian. The old Punisher comics were amazing. Uh, Hell yeah, they were. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, Polly's. Oh, has Polly started shipping? I don't honestly, I don't know what's going on with Polly's book. I, I'm not saying because I genuinely don't know. And he's not. Now, here, here's the deal with Mars Monkey Max. Check. Here's the deal. Also, depend. this depends on what comics he back. Like, if you're looking at, like, this, say, the Mythicals, go on the updates page to see where they're at. Because the whole idea is when you back these books... They don't just automatically come right away on, like, let's just say the river first. And I'm not saying that as, like, a bad thing or a disrespect. When crowdfunding, you're funding the book as they make it along during the process. Yaira, when you're buying an item, it's a finished product. There's nothing wrong with either or. But that's the whole gist of the crowdfunding is you're funding a book that's being made as it's building money as it goes along. So let's just say, pretend you back. Hojo's cool book, The Mythicals number two. Check the update section. Look in that. I know Gary's still working on Vindicated Inc. He's still working on it. I haven't, there's a reason you haven't received your copy. I haven't had it because he's not done with it yet. I would strongly suggest you check the updates on their page. And if, if you, you know, if you can't check the updates, they are, all those guys are on social media. You can even just ask them. Gary's on Pop Culture Minefield, his YouTube channel. Hojo doesn't have a channel, but he does show up every week on someone else's channel. Just ask him, and he'll keep you uh, updated on what's going on with the comics. These guys are both very, very good about being transparent about what's going on with their comics. They're not going to let you down. They are going to be very upfront with you, and they both have experience with comics. And also, once again, assuming that those are some of the books. But I know you also mentioned Polly's book. Okay, Mythicals. Yeah. Trust me when I say Hojo is not going to let you down. And Polly has been touched. It still has her eyes. Okay. Did he give you a tracking number? Ask it. See if he gave you a tracking number. Because that should answer your question of the tracking number. Um, Look into that for you. I'm Obviously, I'm not Polly, but I, I do want to help you out the best that I can. But yeah, Mythicals is still being worked on. But I do know it's it's closer to being done than it is farther. Okay, buddy? If you have any more questions, um, he says no, they haven't. Ask Polly 
If not, if you want me to ask Polly, let me know, and I will personally reach out to him just for you. All right, man? Let me know. All right. Uh, yeah, I recover, number one. Yeah, I, I enjoy this cover. I I, get, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of good like oh I like this one I like I like I like that people are more like they don't know which cover. Now the one thing I didn't get that I wish I did, and I, I'm probably gonna like take my chances and hope to get it at a meetup, is this. Let's go right here. I want Ooh. this shirt. That's. This is the one thing I wish I got any time, but I was trying to rush myself, and I wish I had gotten it. And I was like, "Oh, I can just get it now," but I'm like, "No, I'm gonna want to wait till meet till a meet up. That way, I can just throw it on right away." And also, it'd be cool to say, "Hey, I got it the meet up." You know, as I'm looking at this, uh, the the character Yara, she, like, I keep getting little flashes of the Carol Danvers Miss Marvel coming to mind with just the way she's depicted her posing right, should be yes she and should be. <laughs> and and they're yeah and they're doing a great job of really kind of help build up her and this care this character this is the iris the character i've been saying all this time mm-hmm. i think is going to be the standout is you know I as big as right. as big as uh isom was mm-hmm. i think yaira is going to be truly going to be the the sm- the star character I think you might be right, and, and sometimes that's just how it happens. This seems to be the character that people seem to be really latching on towards the most, and people like those characters who kind of like are the uh, characters who like I'm going to make everything that much more suspenseful. And if she truly is the Punisher, but with powers of her of her universe, once again, it's like okay, lean into that. Yeah, I see Masquerade. You, you get it. You're a metalhead. You get this mentality. You and I are the same nature. We we you get me, man. You get it. You're so. cut from the same cloth. Yeah, we, we really are. <laughs> Shout out to nice bun. Nice bun. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> I I'm I'm excited about this. So no, I, I think Yara is definitely gonna be the character that stands out. I I think that's gonna be a character that people are gonna really latch on to. And it seems like once again, the the sisters have really proven that people want a female character that they can let us out. Oh, it's my buddy, the Wake Down. How you doing, Wake Down? I've been watching your videos. So, long time no see, sir. I'm so glad you're back on YouTube. Now, I'm I'm really looking forward to see where this book goes, and I'm also looking forward. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I think I, I think he I think he, I think Nick hit his threshold for the amount of praising he can do. I got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was genuinely just hearing you really into where, what you were cooking and then <laughs> I got, I got recorded. <laughs> yeah, snapped out. Jones it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nick got canceled. I canceled myself, man. I canceled myself. Uh, <laughs> See, you, uh, you gotta laugh funny. at yourself. That that's what happened, man. I clicked the wrong button. So what can I say? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Don't worry, guys. We're still here. Um. Anyways, yeah, that was my thing. thing. Is there anything you guys uh, got or that I should highlight, or maybe you're looking to get that I should highlight? Uh, I have something that I wanted to watch with you guys. I haven't okay. seen the live action trailer. Oh, let's watch it. Fuck it. Yeah, I, everybody says, oh, the actress is hot, but the accent is... I I didn't watch it just to watch okay. it on the show. Okay. No, it's fine. Let's do it. I know she's a Canadian lady. Um, she's very tall and she's athletic as... No, I don't know. I think there's you could deb- have a good, good genuine debate on the voice. No, as far as her athleticism, Dude, I don't feel. I feel like she looks the part perfectly. Most Canadian women that I have met are hot as hell. So she. I don't right know if it's rally. really good look, uh, or if 
I just have access to a limited pool of women from mm -hmm. Canada, but I haven't been disappointed once. Let's Pablo also, got all the Canadian girlfriends. Let's also keep in mind these are I supposed wish. to be nothing more than like a preview to like um, a comic. It's almost like yeah, a comic. If these were basically were supposed to be like yeah, it was nothing more than just something that they shot over one day. This wasn't supposed to be some fully serious thing. This is just hey, let's just let's just film this for the fun of it. This wasn't supposed to be like some full on show or movie that's a preview of things that come. If it was, I could see why people would feel a little bit more skeptical of it. I I, I would, but to me, it's like, oh hey, let's let's just shoot this for, for a day and have fun with it. I was I hoping... see it in that I see it in that different context because that's exactly what they're setting up for. Yeah, I get what you mean, but I was really hoping for another animated trailer because oh, the last was one was, was killer. Too. No, no, I no, love that was one. outstanding. That was straight up outstanding. And I'm hoping we do get that. Now, however, like I said, this is and he, Eric said himself, the live trailer was a fraction. If I had to guess what he meant by a fraction, he said uh, versus what he spent on the anime trip. My guess is he's probably spent maybe a hundred thousand dollars or less, maybe slightly less on this. Oh, Animation's I mean, wait, okay. expensive. Spent, if, uh, yeah, he spent way if less anybody on the... and maybe maybe I'm overestimating. Me. Maybe yeah, I am. You're way I'm overestimating just... on this. Okay, so, so it was done on like a literal okay, shoestring budget. And you gotta think about it. Uh, the the Sasuke sisters have a lot of favors and a lot of strings that they can pull up in Canada because they they were directors and filmmakers first before they yes. did anything else. So I'd imagine they probably called in a lot of favors to get this done as fast and as quickly and for as cheaply as they bought. I'd imagine and, I doubt yeah, he spent more they, than ten grand. They honestly. also had to because they, they had that one car that they wrecked. They say if they mess this up everything yeah, that the rest shot. of this is canceled oh, so shit. they had to get everything right for this really cheap take but okay uh for the it. guys that don't really know uh animation is really pricey if you are not one of the big companies oh, yeah, it is. because animators yeah. uh will just build you by the hour even yeah. some uh, will build you by the minutes of work Mm -hmm. But if they, you are not uh, hiring them for a really big um, project, they mm -hmm. will build you by the second of animation. Mm -hmm. And a second of animation can be thousands of dollars. And I mean it, thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can see why they turn to live action. I just prefer the animation, man. It was killer. No, that's fair. And I, I do feel like we're going to get more. I think it's just more of how, if we're going to do it, you know, because have you noticed you had, I saw him too, is like, what, 30 seconds? And then Alpha Core is like a minute, minute and a half. Obviously, they want to do stuff that's going to be a bit more longer form, but in order to do that, they got to collect the dough, per se. So we'll see, regardless. Let's have, let's have some fun and watch this, all right? And we can level with each other here. Uh, do you have sound? Oh, I hear yeah, it. Can you envision it? I can't make promises. That's what I don't like about their website. You can't, you can't like maximize the video for some reason. Yeah. You have to, like watch it on YouTube in order to maximize. Right. The video. Well, if you just click on the YouTube thing, it'll pop up. Nick, just grow it. This is gonna be tough. I just worry it's gonna get more blurrier. Ooh, that. now it looks worse. People like me shouldn't be able. No, to just do click that. on the you click on the YouTube icon. Yeah, yeah. And it'll yeah. Open it up. we're gonna we go. we're gonna do this from YouTube. Yeah, yeah, better than a moment here. Sorry, guys. Ah, oh, man, Sorry. I'm starting to really get a bit of the kick of this beer, but. At least, Good. did you saw last It's a Gundam stream? Uh, no, was but that, tell me. Was that the one we had for Tonga on? Yeah. Uh, he got uh, his hands on some pills. In the middle of the stream, the pills kick in. <laughs> 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 he just goes to shit. 
<laughs> it's one of my favorite streams of all time because he's literally a full minute in silence just watching to nothingness and you know that the camera is striking his expression perfectly is just a blank stare into nothingness and he just starts everything is fucked now man all right <laughs> he goes in yeah. Okay, let's watch it. Let let's watch it now. Oh, hold ah, shit. Okay, got it. I was overanalyzing. <laughs> Analyzing. <laughs> and this is the character that has been cosplayed by green haired anti liberal, great lady, Krista Nova. All right, dudes. Oh, Krista did an awesome cosplay. Yeah. Make it big. Now the next one over. <clears throat> there you, there go. you go. There you go. Twisted Twins production, baby. This is gonna be tough train my body to do things that people like me shouldn't be able to do but unfortunately for me flying ain't one of them Don't f did you notice okay now we're in efat mode that car had a texas license plate <laughs> nice coach. And they shot in toronto oh. that's actually cool sorry or i can't remember if it was not Toronto, but they shot in canada in canada that's cool that they actually remember to get that. Of yeah, course. That's, that's good. Detail. Even they though this out, they would have called detail. out if it had Canadian plates. They would have got called out for that shit. Yeah. No, that but that's good that they got that. That's good they got that. Anyways. Yeah, can, yeah, you're right. Cause like it it because the ripper the ripa haters would have been all over that. That that would have been like a hashtag trending, like rip a plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ripa Release the Ripa okay. plate. No, 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 no. No, uh, Ripa needs to get uh, his hands into some fast food joint and actually get the Ripa plate. And it comes with everything Texan. <laughs> All right, well, let's continue this, guys. Follow me. <laughs> Biologist and archaeologist who we feel is going to be an undeniable asset here at Projexus. Won't you please join me in welcoming her to our team? Dr. Sally Rodell. God damn, she's hot. Yeah. Dude, those legs with that ass and that. <laughs> oh, oh, going oh, oh, Canada. Yeah. Oh, Canada. <laughs> That's all I will say. Oh, Canada. All I know is. There's a certain canine that's gone around on the other side, and well, I'll let them have their peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> or die. Secure the area until off the can arrive. <laughs> that was one of the Saskas, wasn't it? That was one of them. That's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's one of them. I love it. What's up, your muzzle uncle? Um, How you doing, sir? Thanks for dropping in. That's cool that one of the sisters filmed. That's cool. Yeah, now, if you actually watch their actual movies, now I'll now I'm, I'm going to be the first to admit it. Horror is not my go-to genre. It's not. It hasn't been. Probably never will be. But there's of course certain movies that I do love in the genre. I love Halloween. I love The Shining. And I know they did a movie with Kane as well um, for WWF when WWF had WWF Studios. They do have, when they actually have proper funds, they do know how to make a legitimate looking movie. It may not be my kind of movie because it's not. And I'll say that. I'm going to stand by that. But can they make something under the right budget like it? Yes, they can. Once again, we got to remember circumstance on the hair. So let's say this was probably uh, here. I said a hundred thousand. Everyone on the panel is like, I'm overestimating for a hundred thousand, over hundred thousand. And I'm probably they're probably right. Maybe I am. 
this was over one day, and I we just got that 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 context. Okay, uh, let's just think Whereas about the Batman trailer on Indiegogo had hundreds of thousands and looked great because actual hundreds of thousands was spent. Uh, a couple of thousands on cameras, uh, illumination, and everything because obviously they are not buying; them. they are just uh, getting them for the day. Uh, technician, a uh, couple of thousands more. I will say this is uh, 15 to 20. Yeah, my my guess is under 25. That's that's yeah, that's the bar I'll put. I'll set. Okay, okay, and you might be right. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards I'm gonna do a minor backtrack and say 50k just in case I don't know in case there's odder ends of things that were factored in but let, let's continue the trailer we will continue the comic shop talk efap <laughs> let's cool to see one of the sisters right here it is the truest law of the earth very few things have the ability to survive the test of time altona though we may not be around to see them to their fullest fruition but we struggle to create now will be the triumphant echoes from the past. Five minutes. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. I was here. I lived. I am still here. I'm on you. Okay, I want to stop right there. I I had seen someone mention in the comic that her accent changed, and that you could say that it, you don't like it or not. That's fine. I think that it's a fair criticism, but I don't agree on her accent changed. It just sounds like her voice. At least her accent is not full Wanda Maximo from Age of Ultron. No, I—I'll be honest. I'm not too keen on the accent. That's uh, fine. I—that's I, fair. But that's better than someone who's saying her accent changed because it didn't change. It's the just body the and the face you're not resonating perfect. with. Yeah, just the body and the face are absolutely perfect for the Jaira costume. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that, that, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, she's <laughs> done up. No uh, objections no. from Caster on that. Uh, if like, you nah, see on the up. on the page, uh, and you see on everything that they have released of material, mm -hmm. uh, she is really muscular, uh, really toned, and you can see mm -hmm. that. Or oh, even you see in uh, yeah, heavy clothes uh, dress is yeah, is she's perfect for that. And that and that's fine, Putin's cat. There, that's totally fine. I that uh, I, if you're worried about that's totally fair, but to say it's all over the place is not true. If you're worried about how it well, sounds, okay, I'd say that's fair. And the other thing oh, about so this is this this is not something that's supposed to be a pre like these people aren't supposed to carry on into a series or anything mm -hmm. like that. This was just supposed to be a one shot as a trailer for the comic book. That's it. That's all. Do you know what will? Dude, it will slap is the if they come with something on the same level of budget production as uh, Superman and Lois. Because that yeah, would take millions. I know, but uh, just think about it. Uh, the kind of action, the kind of characters, the powers, and everything is not so over the top. So the budget for animation goes really really lower uh, as soon as you start discarding things like world depends where everything is on flames and you have this many robots if you are just doing something that is more subdued something more contained as it was uh superman and lois you will really spend way less uh, the only thing is cleaning the costumes and everything that that's a bitch but if you make really good costumes and you get really good rigs for uh, harnessing and everything uh, on the flying scenes uh -huh. you can do it really cheaper than hollywood do uh, does so they could pull it out 
an Ajaira or at least an Isom live action series on that vein, I will watch uh -huh. it. Okay. So Go ahead, I've got a I've got a little bit of a theory that I've been kind of devising over this, and this is me spitballing. So I so I so I'm not I'm not hanging my head on the theory or anything. Okay. Do you think she could be like long lived and be kind of like the Norfolk people? Hmm. I have actually thought of that. I, I still have thought yeah. about that. There's, oh. some there's, there's, there's some interesting information on the back of one of these cards. It kind of hints at something. It's called like the all the Dokumon cards, which my buddy yeah. Five Pico Seconds, a Dolph Lundgren member. Well, and it's funny because I was actually I was looking up her card the other day when we were looking at this trailer because I was like, I, I know she's over six foot, and yeah, she's six two. Her and age I think is the little... actress is six two or six three. Too. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I was detail. supposed to be six three. Her age is eluding me, but she does appear ancient, perhaps more so than I have. I have been so keeping up with I have been keeping up with her longer than any other subject. She has a knowledgeable knowledge that exceeds those who appear very elderly. She's an archaeologist in occupation, but she's most recently mm -hmm. been a consultant for Projexus as a biologist, which is what we saw in the trailer. That's two lifetimes worth of study, and that's how I know she's older than what she appears. She doesn't have any known allegiances, and she certainly isn't a hero. Every relationship seems short-lived and tactical. I've seen her kill small armies of men, yet she does not quite seem evil. Either way, this woman is dangerous. So, okay, so yeah, she is a, a really tall MILF archaeologist. Basically, she is Diana from... The Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. All right, so oh shit, my guy, Price of Reason from What's Midnight's up, Edge After Dark. Price, Hello. how you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. Nice to see you here. Hope you have a good Friday night. And yes, Dolph Lundgren was actually all over the place with uh, Master of the Universe. Do I care? No. Yeah. But was he? Yes. Anyways, yeah, here's the card. Really killer card. Let's 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 finish this trailer. Let's let's watch this because we have a conversation. It is that struggle that is the affliction of creation. I would like to thank Mr. Eusebio for allowing me the opportunity to discover and create alongside my esteemed colleagues at Projectus. Thank you. That guy is enjoying that handshake too much. <laughs> She's well studied, Jerry. But if you want to question her credentials, be my guest. That's not what I was saying. It's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Dr. Rodell, from my understanding. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Pause the, pause right there. This is an Dave Filoni. No, this is an epic <laughs> that only people that have studied sciences will get. Mixing. Anything that is archaeology or anthropology plus biology <laughs> is a win. It's an absolute win. It's something that you should do. Why? Oh because in archaeology, gosh. you need to know about which animal or which uh, life form will generate this kind of sediments that are biological or nature, but got mineralized uh, between this time and this time. You need to understand when a fungi does this, uh, the deterioration, the kind of uh, differences in bone density. Dude, mixing archaeology and biology is the perfect combination. I don't know what that guy is smoking, but he is not smoking the right thing. He doesn't know shit for somebody that is hiring an archaeologist, biologist. That is a great combo, man. Sorry, I just needed oh, to get good, that man. out of you're my good. chest. You're good. <laughs> Honest, it's all good, man. <laughs> well, I mean, the, I, the the objection, though, is the fact that it's she's so young, and yet she has all this knowledge. Yes. She's she doesn't look that joke. Well, she might have a little bit of a Wonder Woman thing in terms of her aging or lack thereof. We'll find out. Okay, uh, you get uh, into college around 1718. Uh, for for archaeology, that will be five, six years. Uh, for biology, if you are using a lot of your credits from... Uh, sorry. Uh, from okay, archaeology, man. you will get uh, a biology, uh, biology degree in what? Uh, 
for years more. She's in the uh, in her theories. Uh, if she made a doctorate also, she's still perfectly fine. And she had time to work. All right, Just dude. saying. Shall we continue She's right. this? Yep. All right. Here's Jerry. She's on our side. Congratulations. Ah, congratulations. <laughs> that man is tiny in front of him. <laughs> I like the way the if you pause it real quick if you go back to where it's like the close up on on Yaira's face like she looks look like the, she's restraining herself from punching the guy that is grabbing her ass well also look at look at the way look at the way the, the lights reflecting off her glasses yep. the yeah. blue under her eyes yeah mm -hmm. it's cool it's a nice touch yeah. It yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a neat little it's a neat little bit. You took that like a chomp. Were you trying to knock me out? No. If it's meant to be a death blow. Wait, was that uh, Ebony? That was Brian Solari's voice at the end. We said, "Okay, yeah, okay, 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 down. okay." okay. No, yeah. I've heard some people saying she seems villainous. I would say once again she's she's the anti-hero, and we also need more context yeah. in this scene. The only thing I think is the true genuine flaw is probably her accent. I'd say that's about it. Can that be worked? Yeah. First but time we saw I think that's about it. Is mm -hmm. for me that's the only genuine complaint I have is the accent. And First not time because we saw of what I hear, but because my complaint is I feel like she it just needs really needs some real work. Mm. But as far as looking at the character and could that be perfect in time? Absolutely. Absolutely. The suit is great. I think the suit I actually I think the suit's awesome. I'll even go but, that far and say the suit's awesome. Yeah. On the topic that she sounds more like a villain, remember that the first time we saw her on the page, she was yeah. uh, fighting Alpha Core. She was antagonizing yeah. Alpha Core. So based on that, yeah, uh, I will say she kind of looked like a villain from the get-go on the first time she appeared on page. And that's not a mistake. That is something fully intentional. And maybe it's for me. I don't see that. I just see that as someone who has their own goals outside. It, she, to me, seems like one of those actually great airy characters. I think that uh, that concept is not something many people actually mean. People just say that because they want their character to say, there's no such thing as good guys or bad guys. No, I actually feel like this character actually is a actual great area character. And I actually think she, if you were to ask that character, assuming that she existed, she probably could say, hey, this is a hero that's a villain. She is not either of those. She probably could tell you the difference. But yeah, other than that, it's the credits. And we'll look Wait, at... how, long, uh, how long are the credits, though? Well, they not have long. anything after the war? Yes. Okay, uh, let it play. It, it, it's short. <laughs> That's what she said. I like the music. I love uh, Mars Monkey saying that uh, she needed uh, several lines of coke uh, uh, during the filming. Uh, her eyes don't how do I say it? For her eyes to be bright blue, she needs spice, not coke. Uh -huh. That's well, a good reference. I did. The, the making <laughs> of it is really good. The making of it is really good. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see Link. Lincoln USBO was in Ison too. I can confirm that because I read it. Brian Solari, I was using Alpha Core. Uh, now, Dre Manolfo, I can't say I recall. Yes, that was Ison, Vince. That was Ison. That was a moment from ISOM number one. Yep. That was for sure. 
Yeah, so obviously, and yes, Jen Soska, she was a civilian. That's cool. I like that she did that. I thought that was really cool that she did that. I, her her scream actually did sound genuine. Her scream actually did sound like maybe she's done some cameos in her own movies. The music don't match really well. It's really? more like I actually like I, it. I actually like yeah, the music. I, I like the music, but it's more like a spy music rather than a superhero music. See, yeah, that's the thing. I don't think she's a superhero. I'm good with this. To me, it sounds like a soundtrack of an anti-hero. <laughs> like whether it is like or how... is it random piano, I think it fits. Actually, sorry, I don't think it fits. I I believe it fits. Winter is here. And there's the cool shirt, the covers, the posters, the Dokuman cards. Covers is rad, man. Yeah, no, the covers are absolutely killer. Oh, Mohammed, I'm glad you're reading that run, dude. Yeah, my guy. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah, see, Vulcan, we're, we're resonating here. I, I like the music a lot. Who's the chick she knocked out? If I had to give an educated guess, I think this was done on purpose to say, hey, read the comic. That's my guess. Even though Dude. it's not really been addressed from the few streams I've seen, that's my educated guess is that, that it was done to do that. I love that the first recommendation is a Matt Welsh video. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Razor Fist right there, Super Mario RPG. And by the way, that band right there, right next to Yara behind the scenes trailer, that's Traveler, who I will be seeing next week in Houston. Nice. Uh, they have an album that they put out uh, last month called Prequel to Madness. Uh, Mohammed said, listen to it. I recommend it to him. Go listen to Traveler, because prequel to madness is a fucking awesome album and i cannot wait to see that band in a few days i cannot wait but yeah um yarcha looks for what it was trying to do i'm i'm good with it like i said my only issue is the voice i don't see a consistency issue i just think it just needs work as far as the mm -hmm. tonality. That's about it. But I enjoyed yeah. the music. I really enjoyed the music. I enjoyed the suit. And I, it, it feel like it was just previewing off a page, random page or two, sporadically. It wasn't like the Elf Go trailer where he gave you an idea of who the characters were right off the bat. And you got an I'm idea. Of, okay, that's Alpha Core. This Yara trailer was a little bit more vague. And I feel like that was intentional because I feel like there was... Things being say, hey, read the story to actually understand this all. I think that was done on purpose. It strikes me a bit. Uh, uh, I think uh, Ironcaster will remember the old school Magic the Gathering trailers. I was just, I was just talking about this with someone. Yeah, yeah, like it, the, the it Ice Age. Like that. Yeah. Oh my God, those are those are those are uh, those are great for like riffing material. Yes, uh -huh. those were. Whereas this, this doesn't have that same sort of like kind of hokiness to it. Uh, I, I, it, it does make it does feel like it is. Look, it's just they're taking a little bit of like the known marketing material to kind of go and do some stuff with and put that trailer out. Oh, it's meant to just intrigue you and yeah. make you want to check out a little bit of it. Uh -huh. Dude, the last trail. I'd say it's successful. The last trailer oh. that I actually liked from Magic the Gathering was the new Phyrexia one. The mm -hmm. Karn is coming. That is the final one that they did that was actually enticing. After that, it was like, nah. They change. Okay, they go from live action to animation, then to 3D animation, and 3D animation is garbage, man. I'm glad they're, 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 they're just further streamlining it. Yeah, more and more. Like, go ahead. 
like uh have you seen this stuff where has or wizards of the coast is going more in on the ai art mm-hmm. oh that's garbage uh, i i i just dro- i dropped i dropped a link to you on twitter uh i could yeah, actually yeah, yeah. drop it for you. Yep. Uh, but- i'll i'll drop it for you to uh uh, so if you want to check that out, Jesse. In the set for Ixalan, the latest, uh, the latest Ixalan set, I noticed in one of the cards the text, the actual ruling of the card is made by artificial intelligence. It's absolutely nonsense. You cannot use that for anything. Don't do that. Wait for artificial intelligence to get better before implementing in anything that is worth more than a dollar. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so but yeah, no. Uh, you've oh, got sorry. One, go ahead. You've got one artist working with an AI program that can produce ten or fifteen cards in the same time it would take, you know, ten or fifteen artists to produce ten or fifteen cards. You know, yeah, but the, the rule text. Well, but the other thing about it is you got to think about it. Hasbro is broke because, as far as D and D and Magic the Gathering is concerned, yeah. because of everything that they've done to those brands. They've absolutely devastated and destroyed those brands, and they're desperate. And they have to figure out a way to cut costs. And if AI is here, and if it can do a halfway decent job, and and the and the people that are still playing don't give a shit, then they're gonna do it, and it's gonna make it's gonna just help them scratch that bottom line as much as they can because things are so they, bad for them. Dude, they are so bad right now that for the latest premium uh, collaboration that they have uh, that is followed, they are already having things on sale. It was released a week ago. <laughs> Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted one of those commanders. I wanted the dog commander because I love dogs. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing... And here we are kind of changing off of the, the, the Ripiverse topic, but you're really... It's it's kind of that reality. And I think this is something Neon said in the, the, in the Confish video today on it. And I don't think he's wrong. Is that D and D is always going to kind of be around as sort of the entryway brand that people are going to recognize and get into. But if they stick around and stay with with these hobbies, and this is D and D particular, they'll move on to other games because yeah, let's put it this way: real gamers aren't sticking with D and D. The real like- source for money is actually Magic: The Gathering. They spend like twenty five cents in total, including shipping, for each booster set. Uh, for each booster so in reality what they are spending uh, for something that they sell around three dollars each is 25 cents just think about how much money that represents for the company and they are absolutely destroying that business they cannot get anything sold so uh, and going back to what Ironcaster was saying about the D and D thing too, about how it's kind of like an entry level for a lot of point. Like mm-hmm. my son and his friends are big D and D players, and they do nothing but homebrew campaigns anymore. Yep, like nothing. And Pathfinder's really big with them, and yeah, I mean, they, they'll play. They'll play. They'll use like five E rules and stuff like that, but it's all homebrew campaigns. Nobody does shit that comes out of Wizards of the Coast anymore. And that was part of what they were doing last year with the the OGL debacle. They were trying to uh-huh. crack down and and get ownership over that third party market stuff. Yep. Yeah, so they can go and kind of plug that back into it, and it's it was, and that, just, it yeah, that blew up in their face. It just made it was even like worse for them. It was exactly like what Bethesda was doing with mods on their games, what Wizard was trying to do with uh, the Guns and Dragons, and it doesn't work. Sorry, but if you have a base product that is really good, let them add because people that are adding stuff will get you a lot of customers. Well, the problem though was they brought in they brought in new leadership who were looking at it from a like video game standpoint because it was what Cynthia Williams is her name. It's it's a yeah, Williams. Cynthia Williams and Chris Cox. Uh, Chris Cox is a cock for Cynthia Williams. And and the and the thing is like they're trying to look at it as this there's part this part of this market this this marketplace that we're we're giving up like why aren't we trying to cl- to rake that in but the problem is they just they they don't have the familiarity with the products dungeons and dragons as a pro- as a product is has some of the best best uh brand recognition like it's up there with like coca cola like people who've never played know du- know what dun- know of dungeons and dragons Mm-hmm. But then the but then it has the bigger problem of 
yeah, but the so much of what makes the game work is people like your son, like your son, there making their own homebrew stuff, making their own original stuff. Like they don't have, they don't have like the, they don't have the Batman of D and I mean, they do. He's called Drizzt Dorden, but that then requires them to give out some royalties, which mm-hmm. they don't want to do. They just they want to keep screwing over the creatives, like uh, uh, Mar- was it Margaret and Weiss. Uh, Go go work with them. Get that Dragonlance like series off the ground. Uh-huh. Dude, that's it, what uh Ripa is doing really, really well. Is the marketing. He's actually understanding his fan base and he's playing with his fan base in the right notes. So I'm I'm not really that surprised that uh, he got over a million after all the debacle with TBS and everything and all that shit. He still got over a million in 24 hours. That's not a mistake. He has mm-hmm. been playing the right strings on the hearts of the customers. He mm-hmm. has been going all out into being the guy that understands not only mm-hmm. what the market is, but what the fandom is. So he's connecting his... Yeah, he's leading right to what track. his audience wants, which should yeah. be the standard. Oh, absolutely. Wizards cannot do that. So uh, they should hire Eric July to actually come a week, tell them, stop fucking around, and that's mm-hmm. it. Well, and just to kind of connect these two briefly, uh, these two topics, I think what, what we need to see is, you know, re- what he re- what Eric needs to do and what I would like is to see a couple of mini to see a couple of like uh, miniatures of these of these characters, like oh, little yes. like 28, 20, 28 millimeter figures, because uh-huh. there are superhero RPGs out there that yeah. I, I, people would love to have in this. Let game. it get some more canon, because right now there's not enough canon to have a real campaign, well, and if they have a real campaign, they will spoil a bit of the canon on the future. So let them have, let's say, a couple of years, and then they can launch well, a full-on initiative. I'm not, I'm not suggesting we make the... I'm not suggesting the Ripper versus the RPG yet. What yeah, I'm suggesting exactly. is... Yeah. Let's yeah let's let's see a couple of minis like because pe- people are already people are already out there already who already have superhero. You know RPG what will stuff. be better? Okay, the, uh, here is a killer. Uh, here is a killer idea. I know they won't really go into that because uh, being creative common uh, is kind of bad word for companies. But mm-hmm. release creative common three D packs for three D printing your own stuff and make contest of people. Not only painting them, but actually doing dioramas and having everything made awesome. Mm-hmm. And just get into the homebrew scene, get those people interested, and those people will carry a lot more customers. I guarantee it. And the funny thing is, like one of the stretch goals that we're getting is a Yaira, a Yaira statue. Something that I would also point out, I mm. said, I think is a likely thing to to expect before they announce. It's before gonna it came happen. Out. It's gonna what happen. They I could... say, I, it's gonna hit two million. I think oh, easily. my prediction that I made a few weeks back is accurate. It won't exceed ice on one, but it will exceed ice on two. I still believe, and obviously, I'll never ever be able to prove it because I'm literally not capable. But I truly do believe. And I and this is not meant to sound as a diss, but there are some people who they're the types where if they aren't paying with PayPal, they won't pay any other way. Because you got to remember, that's just the reality. I saw one did one point one alone in PayPal before they pulled the plug on it. So even if you cut that it by sixty percent, just to be overly generous. You're still talking around five hundred thousand, and then you also got to remember a lot of people are not factoring a lot of the prices on these things are down. the The cover price of the comic, mm-hmm. the Dokumon cards are twenty five dollars less with the same amount. The shirts are cheaper, the posters are cheaper. So right now we're at one point one or two, I think close to one point two. Right now at this point, I think if I had to give a mathematical guess maybe we'd be at 1.4 or 5 right now assuming 
if we actually had the prices of ice on one, we technically would be at one of those prices because they would be higher. Therefore, the dollar adds up quick. What's up, Max Redstone? Yeah. Uh, he's making yeah. uh, the value proposition way better, but there's a still a gap. And that oh, gap yeah. is the Toyetic uh, scene, but the Toyetic scene is really, really pricey to get going because you have to invest in molding, you have to invest in sculpting. Yeah. If you are doing the 3D print for the sculpting or uh, the original sculpting before doing the negatives and everything, you uh -huh. will also have to spend a lot of money on that. So instead of that, let people start getting into your a brand as a hobby just uh -huh. doing whatever they can with 3d printers and then yeah. you get with the premium stuff and the premium stuff can go for a lot of money man how's it going hell the lore long time no see on the channel man it's been a long 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 while but um he could you rubber first car game a few years yeah no that to see car game be good i know my buddy uh good friend comics division and he's part of the Geeks and Gamers Tabletop. I know a lot of those guys want a reverse thing of that yeah. over there. And that's cool that people want that. And it shows you that there is a demand in almost all facets. You know, right. as... And that's cool. As, you know, great as it would be to see to see him doing, going off to do, like, to see, like, something original there. Uh -huh. There are a couple of other ideas to I that I could throw out that that come to mind. Uh, there is a s little indie superhero RPG called Ascendant uh -huh. that is kind of done as a bit of a throwback to the so sort of the old Marvel superhero role playing game. That I mean, I could almost see them doing like a rip of verse expansion and then it kind of does a double duty to help sell that uh -huh. and which is a, a rule a rule set that's already exists and then kind of turns around and helps uh Im improve sales on that book i and that sounds i could see that being a thing i could no <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that was a good time. No, here, okay, soon God. Here's the reason why, and this, I'm going to just go off what I've seen him say on this for Ken's sake. The reason why he's not gone into statues is because he says he's looked into the demand versus what he's seen as far as the market wants. He, he has said it's not as demanding as it sounds. Now, I think that's why he set the Yaira statues at two million because it was one of those. Okay, if we're gonna do this, I really need to see that people really want this to happen. So, to be fair, I could see why he did that. I could see why he did that. That's and it's exactly like, okay. That's why you do that. You don't want yeah. to just put out just to put out because some people are saying you gotta really make sure that there's a wanding for it. That's exactly why I'm saying let them come brew because this is not the point where you actually can kick off uh, with toys or with the statues, but this is the right time to have people making their own and showing them uh, showing them off to entice the market because if somebody gets a really nice statue done and mm -hmm. they post it on Twitter and Eric July repost it to hell and back, trust me, there will be people that will be ready to but, just but, explore to the money. You might be right, but I can see why he says that though. And that yeah. and, you know, and that's fair that he has that mentality because he wants to make sure he's not just putting anything out just to put out, and then he might you know, oh, but, lose uh, money that's the from thing. it. They don't have to do anything if they do. Uh, let people right. do their own stuff and they showcase it. People will actually start interacting with the idea of having these toys, having these uh, statues, having these busts. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a demand. You need to generate the demand before actually trying to create the market because the market is something that is unstable if you just create it out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, most people know that innovating in a market or just getting a niche in a market is not something that you can do easily. But if there's already demand, then you can actually dig into the market without that much reservation because there's already money there 
for you instead of you trying to chase the money. So uh, what I'm saying is just let them play with your brand until you can actually make them pay for your brand. All right. Hey, Max Redstone, thanks for dropping in. Have a good night, sir. And Putin's cat said, does anyone in the panel have found out? Uh, yeah. There's a reason why I spent over 100 bucks. Well, that, that, I, so even if these are guys feel differently than me, there's your answer, anyone. But yeah, I these can, guys here, yeah. I mean, well, Pablo is in a different situation because he's in Ecuador. I, I'm just going to be real quick on this. Um, and the other guys here, when they like something, they will go all in for it. Commoner, Ironcaster. Even me. Because uh, I, yeah, and, and Pablo, even if the situation is right for him, because obviously he has the most valid reason, because in a country with expensive shipping, it is what that's a problem. Yeah. No, I will say though, Pablo, I cast and I vaguely entertained an idea about doing a care package for you. We'll have to follow up on that conversation. But we Dude. got we got direct donation, we got a super chat to acknowledge. And a comment from my 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 fellow listener of the channel and member, student of God, says the musician slash retweeted the Yiver. That's character. great. I know we were supposed to end the show a while ago, but considering that there's audience here, we may as well acknowledge these things because clearly people still want to hear it. And I'll compromise because we're not we're not going to be here next week. I'll compromise for now. And you guys are clearly still alive, so. Let's let's go look into this thing with with slash here. So let's look See, at. I had no idea about this until you brought it up, Student of God. Oh, I did. I I was randomly checking uh, Twitter, and then all of a sudden, like I saw it came from Slash. I was just like, um, what? That's now, the like, kind that of can't bad, that can't be the Slash who play guitar on Appetite for Destruction. And then I looked into it. Surely enough, it was. So let's share the screen. That's the kind and of ramp that you want. That's exactly the kind of ramp that you want. If right you there. want to get Flat. a lot of people interested on a campaign, somebody that like a slash just out of his interest, yeah. sharing it, that's it. it is that's awesome. great. So dope. That yeah. is so fucking dope. Even, <laughs> even, if, even, if, if, even if he brings in, let's just say, $10,000 extra, that's $10,000 worth of comic book customers that may be discovering this for the first time. The fact mm-hmm. that Slash of Guns N' Roses, and yes, believe it or not, I actually do like Guns N' Roses. Huh. And I will even know. Even if it's I'm only ra- $10. Yeah. Yeah. No, my my thing with Guns N' Roses is when I listen to Appetite for Destruction, because believe me when I say I I do. Uh I, I, just, I, I don't listen to the singles. I have adjusted, I've made my own playlist where I take out the three hits. If it's I like those songs, but those hits have been so overplayed that it's like kind of like killed it for me. But the rest of the album is a five mm-hmm. star album full stop full st- and i trust me when i say i even love the hits i'll say it. i even love the hits but because i've heard them so overplayed i can't listen to them anymore but they're so good songs and the rest of the album is just as good as those singles and the fact that slash is doing this is awesome i if- i always love slash but the fact that he did this Amazing. Thank you, Slash. Okay, if a Slash shared this and there's $10,000 more on the campaign, it's not from people that purchase after a Slash shirt. It's a Slash money. Uh, this is the kind of stuff, if he's sharing, is because he uh-huh. has an interest and he's the kind of people that will spend money on his interest. For example, if you know what happened with the One Ring for Magic the Gathering, who got it? Post Malone. He yeah. was sharing about oh, uh, the cart and everything. There. Then he spent two millions and a half on a fucking cart. Uh-huh. These kind of people in, uh, are the people that when they are sharing something, they already have the interest and they already uh-huh. spent the money. So uh-huh. slash money is on Eric July Bank. Is that easy? No, I'm I'm happy for Eric. I'm happy for Jen and Sylvia. The fact that they got slash on the radar 
is awesome. That's cool as shit. I love that this happened. I am I'm thankful for Slash. Shout out to Slash for doing this. It's it uh, like it's weird because I've known about Slash since you no, know, I was 12, 13. And then when I got into guys like Air July, I was in my early like mid twenties. So it's like my world's colliding type of thing. So this, this is really crazy to see this happen. I I love I it's, love see this. It's it's like when it's like when Aerosmith and Run DMC came together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ollie didn't say it too. Dad, your con- you're part of the conversation. I actually do like early Aerosmith. Early Aerosmith yeah. is awesome. Okay. I got a super chat to acknowledge and a direct donation, and those guys have been very patient and waiting, and I probably should not leave them hanging any longer. And I apologize to those gentlemen. Thank you guys for your patience. Vulcan Lips! <laughs> With the 20! And that is shit. Vulcan lives, drops the twenty, and that's it. That I'd say nothing. I'd say shit. a damn thing. Hey, what is Chad? Max, if you gotta go, gotta go. Have a good night, sir. Thank you for being here. But Vulcan, thank you for the twenty, man. That is once again, that's that's nuts. But thank you, thank you for the twenty, sir. Um, that will not go unrecognized. Also, guys, a uh, heads up. March 28th, we will do a member stream as well. Um, I'm going to also try to see if I could squeeze one in on the 30th for my weekenders as well. I'm going to try to do two, but at the very least, we'll get one. And we got B. Marte for 20! Ah, another one! It says, for mashed potatoes. <laughs> Marte, dude. You're, you're nuts. You're nuts, but thank you. If you ever come to a meetup, man, I'm buying you some. I'm I'm, I'm going to buy the best drink that the bar has to offer, the best pizza. I don't know what, but it's on me, dude. Please come to a meetup so I can re- return the favor, sir. And soon of God says, Ripa should do something like that. Like one person gets a one of a kind. Yeah, I know Eric, his, uh, his letterer, Eric Weathers, did that for his Battle Brick Road, too. I think mm-hmm. that's a great idea, and and hell the Lord have a good night. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great idea. I think he's got to be. Here's the thing: he's got to be very choosy with the the comic he does that for. Like, let's just put it this way: he can't do that with something like I saw him in Alpha Core. Sorry, I saw him in Yaira. No disrespect, Alpha Core. I think it's something he would have to do with like a like a horseman or a gooding. I think he had to do a campaign or something like that because the amount of submissions for those, the more you have, the more people that are going to be that much more mad if they don't get it. If you do it for a smaller comic, no harm, lesser harm, lesser foul. I don't want to say no harm, no foul. We'll just say less. Now, if he wants to do it based on one of those, okay, great. Hey, you know, that's, that's your decision. I just think, you should do it on one of those because that way you have people who really are like paying attention to this universe. That's just my thoughts. If any of the other guys want to object, they can object. Otherwise, I don't know how I feel about the idea about doing that with with comics. Like, I suppose it would have to depend on like what we're talking for. That maybe, maybe if they were to do a series of like kind of what the, what marvel or dc do with uh, what the bigger companies do with like just the the blank cover with like maybe a couple having some sort of maybe having a random sketch in them or or perhaps what we do is like with the various packages going out you you have a chance to get like a a, a, a page of art He's okay. already doing something that I really like that is selling degraded comics but he could sell something that is really special for example, if they have a test print of just a couple of issues to see how it is, 
uh, how everything looks on page and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a collector's item. That's a real <laughs> collector's item because if they, for example, print five samples, uh -huh. that's if you have one out of five, that's actually awesome. And if it's graded or anything, that will really spike the price. And you don't really need to send it uh, to a person that is willing to splurge a lot of money, send it randomly to people that just bought that cover, send it randomly. And if that, peop uh, that person decides to sell it for a million dollars, good on him. He got it for the price of the base issue. That's it. See, I... I, th I think I think that's kind of what I'm feeling like, student god. Like, I'm thinking more along the lines if if let's say there are ten, ten uh, we have ten of the pages of art that those could potentially be slipped out into people's orders. So that's a way to go about it. Uh, I do like what you were saying though, Pablo, with the 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 the, the test pages, mm -hmm. the test books. Those samples that is probably not a bad way to go. Okay. Yeah, just make it random. Make people get the chance to really be the one that has this collector's item that is really rare. Maybe one of five, maybe one of one. And that's it. Nobody else get it. And it's random. So you are the lucky one. Well, uh -huh. that's life. Enjoy it. Sell it. Be really happy. We don't mm. but be happy that you are a customer and you have something really nice. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. People will buy because they want that. All right. All right, dudes. It's been good. It's been fucking awesome, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's time to call it night. We said we're going to do a three hour show. We gave you almost three and a half. Hi, by the time we actually. And the stream proper will be three and a half. Uh, chat, thank you for fucking being here. Uh, we have our usuals. We have a few uh, randoms that we haven't seen in a while who dropped in as well. And, of course, we had some really generous super chats, some great direct donations, some great comments in the chat as well from people who have great comic book knowledge and insight as well as we do. I'm going to miss you guys next week. I really am. And now, dude, thank you for being here, Vulcan. I'm going to miss you guys. Obviously, I'll see some of you for Toxic Tuesday. But for the rest of you, I'm going to miss you guys. I'm straight up going to miss you guys. But we're going to make it good when we come back. All guns blazing in two weeks. Um, I am talking to other people. Okay. Um. They rank from people like Flip City Magazine to NDA. So I am talking to people. The contract talk is going to continue to be great. It's going to be fantastic. And I had to NDA myself because habits. But <laughs> it's going to be a great future. And this one is for you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. To the chat, to the panelists. If you're a super chair, direct donationer. If you're even a channel member, thank you guys. I'm going to miss you guys next week. Salud. <sighs> We're going to plug our channels on the way out. We'll start off with Pablo. Even though he may not have not much going on his channel, he has stuff for Midnight's Edge to plug. Always. Midnight's Edge. Watch it. I didn't sleep to make those videos. So, watch it. <laughs> you heard so the actually, man. we are doing a lot of good work there. So, yeah, please, if you can. I know at least if you are a fan of the same stuff that I am, you will enjoy the small jabs that I insert there, uh, the small things. So please uh, take a look. Uh, uh, my channel will do something someday. I won't make promises because I'm really terrible at keeping them for that channel. But Minasage, watch it. Uh, also, Pauli revived the Minasage Espanol Lives uh, Wednesdays after, yeah, after the 
Minas Edge uh, proper stream. We are doing something on Minas Edge Espanol. Um, they let me have less filters than ever, so it will be fun. So please check that out. And uh, guys, it has been a bless drinking with you, enjoying with you, and talking about some things that we love with you. So cheers, mates. And cheers to you, Pablo. I will miss you, sir. We'll do this again in two weeks. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be huge. It's going to be fantastic. And like Vulcan Liv says with his emojis, cheers to you, sir. Thanks for giving your time and energy, Pablo. Keep up with the Midnight's Edge videos. I have been watching all of them. Nice. All. Not 70%, not 80 all of them. You're doing nice. great work, sir. Keep it up. You keep editing greatly. I'll keep watching. Till then, sir. Have a we'll great do, night. Will do, brother. Will do. And then Mohammed says, check, uh, dude, keep keep on reading. Keep me updated on Gilded. I can't wait to see where your progress is, sir. Thanks for being here as well, Mohammed said. Your time is awesome and valuable. The common nerd who has a very successful second channel coming back. Yeah, um, yeah, come check out the new channel. Uh, the links are in the chat. Uh, mm, excuse me. Um, I've got vets talking tomorrow night at 9, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time over on, uh, for Skinamax Saturdays. Um, Sunday is 2 p.m. Uh, Bible study. We're going through the book of Samuel right now. And if anybody ever wants to know why we're doing that, one of the things that we found is as we're going through, especially books in the Old Testament, and especially like um, Judges and some of the others, and now we're going to see it in Samuel as well, is one of the things that we see is a cultural rot that goes on, right? And it goes in a cycle. It's a, it's a secular thing through history, right? People are good for a while. You know, it's the old saying, you know, a, a hard time, you know, good times make weak men, weak men make hard times, hard times make good men, rinse and repeat, right? Well, you see those exact same kind of things in the Bible. And it's really fun. It's really interesting to go back and read those historical documents and understand like this is something that has happened before in our culture. And it's something that will happen again. But if we go through and we understand our history and we learn our history, it helps us kind of head it off the pass. So come join us for that if nothing else for the history lesson um and then sunday nights um 6 p.m um we're doing uh when who was good so kind of like here on comic shop talk how we would go back and review old good comics good story runs and stuff like that that some of us may have never read um there's a lot of people who haven't watched doctor who out there and we're going back through all the good stuff nice. before, uh, neo who came around mm -hmm. um and we are trying to raise money to get to vegas um we've got a couple of weeks left to finish raising money for that um so the sunday night stream is normally a little bit of a a little bit of a party stream. We've got some games and stuff we played where you guys can come in and donate money and get interesting things out of that while we're also going through and watching some really good Doctor Who. Um, and then Monday through Friday is the 11 a.m. Uh, the morning prep. And normally in the evenings, I've been playing video games around 8 or 9 p.m. We've been playing a lot of Helldivers. Um, Quarter Black Garrett's been showing up playing Helldivers with us. Big Rob from over on Vets Talk has been coming in and playing. Griffin, one of my really good friends. Um, he always comes in and play. Venus, if you've ever seen Venus out there, he comes in and plays. So, yeah, it's a good time. If you've got Helldivers, come and play with us. It's a great time. Uh, but other than that, yeah, another great comic shop talk. Always a good time around here. Bullshitting with the boys and talking about all the fun and crazy and wonderful things going on out there in the comics world. Thanks for having me, Nick, and shout out to the chat. Thank you know, you, I just picked sir. up Helldivers. Oh, dude, you got to come play with us one of these nights. It's so much fun. We're you spreading really democracy. That's great. That's great. And they just introduced the mechs. We've got mechs now, Ironcaster. That's got my attention. But yeah. no flying box. Flying uh, box. Don't no, 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 no. I, listen, listen. As far as Super Earth's concerned, there is the bugs do not have wings and they cannot fly. That is an absolute conspiracy theory. That is heresy as far as I'm concerned, and we will burn you at the stake for saying otherwise. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, Erd, you've been missed. Thank you for being here, sir. Absolutely. Right. Congrats on your successful second channel. You have yeah, a great night and weekend. Go sub to that channel, guys. And please do that. And what's up, Oren Alteris? Uh, you're catching the ad, but please catch the replay. It is worth it. And come on the Gilded, sir. Um, Toxic Tuesday, next week, I have Ghostbusters, hopefully Dean Kane, All-American Law oh. Review. If that doesn't come out, I'll figure out a video for you guys. Uh, other than that, Ironcaster. Why, well, hello, friends. This is Iron Caster speaking, and guys, it's been so much fun. 
Uh, you can find me over on my, on my channel, Iron Castro, on Monday nights, where we are talking about some all kinds of big super robot fun goodness. Like right now, we've been go we've been talking a little bit about the currently airing series, Bang Brave Braver, which has been a fantastic super robot series. It is all kinds of homoerotic in all the best ways possible <laughs> that that super robots can allow. It is. It would be Mad Mardigan and get and Gary approved. Nice. <sighs> And it I is like honestly, it is like the best fucking show out right now. Uh, you can find me over tomorrow with T-shirt historian for the Weekend Geek, where we'll no doubt we will no doubt be talking about Wizards of the Coast because they should love to stick their to toes into the AI art debacle. Uh, of course, with any luck, our our little fine felted friends such as Charlie here, hello, will be on with the Cotton Council tomorrow. If assuming assuming that. Jolly's got that coming back. Well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what are you looking at me for? Look over there. Well, I don't want to. Uh, it is time. I agree, what? Vulcan. I agree. <clears throat> Caster, Puppet, you're both awesome. Uh, oh, also. Tuesday night, I'll uh, Tuesday night I'll be over. I'll be on uh, with Pops and Stone Loki for Talk Hard. Where this week we are going through the uh, what was this? What year is this? Nineteen eighty four film, Greystroke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. ah! Hey, <laughs> you're good. not Tarzan. Hey, I'm shooting him. It's been good, man. You have a great night, week, weekend, sir. I will see you soon, as always. Hey, we're we're talking all the time. It's almost like there's a like there's an actual friendship between us dudes. All right, guys. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for supporting the show. Toxic Tuesday next week. Ghostbusters for the comic shop show. We'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. I'm going to drink this and then face plant on my bed. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for supporting the show. Cheers.